Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to welcome the Visitation Cub Scouts today. If everybody give them a round of applause. happened to be nine years old and it was about the age that I moved to this town so I told them they're possibly all future political leaders of our community or leaders of some sort in our, our community so God bless uh, our scouts. Um, uh, in order to make this uh, meeting official I'd like to call the council meeting. I ask Clerk Spencer to call the, call the roll please. Gutenkopf. Here. Peza. Here. Shea. Here. Leader. Here. Rose. Here. Graham. Here. Hipskin. Here. York. Here. Nibo. Here. Healy. Here. Morley. Here. Kennedy. Here. Moliner. Here. Wagner. Here. 14 present, zero absent. 14 present, zero absent. We have an official quorum. Uh, the first item uh, on our agenda uh, is recognition of the York High School Boys Cross Country Team. And I'm going to go down to the podium and uh, welcome uh, Coach Joe Newton, uh, Coach Hedman, and the third place state title championship team from the state of Illinois, the York Dukes. God bless, guys. I'd also like to make a little note uh, that they uh, qualified, uh, not only did they take third in state, but they actually qualified in a regional, national um, uh, uh, tournament. Uh, and they actually beat the two teams that they lost to in the in the re Midwest Regional, and uh, finished as one of the top national teams in the state of in the in the, in the United States of America. So uh, here they come back and, and vindicate themselves at the regionals and uh, beat both of the teams that they came up a little short with, like 17 points I want to say, downstate. But uh, that's that's what we do. We come back and beat them. So coach, come on up here. I got a proclamation for you. And the guys, if you guys want to come up and right, stand right in front of the council right up here, if you, welcome all the. Uh, the champions over here, the York, the York Dukes. <laughs> it's a special for me because uh, back in 1980, um, I was a freshman, and a guy grabbed me out of gym class. I was a little short guy, 4'11", about 90 pounds, and he said, I'm going to make a runner out of you. I'm going to make a state champ out of you. And I wasn't a very great athlete, you know. I was a little guy, uh, and this guy was right. We won state titles. I was on the team that won state titles in '80, all the way through '83. So four in a row, first time a team ever did that, and that's that's because of this guy right here. He got he got me to break a five-minute mile, and that's a feat because I was not a runner. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Whereas the York Community High School cross country team has again demonstrated its ability, courage, and team effort under tough competitive conditions, and whereas the long green line stands for excellence in cross-country competition, unexcelled in the state of Illinois, with York Community High School winning more trophies than any other school in any varsity sport, and whereas the team won the Palatine Invitational, won the Peoria Invitational, won the Lake Park Regional Championship, placed third in the state finals in the state of Illinois, won the Midwest Regional Championship, and qualifying York as one of the top teams in the United States of America. And whereas your community high school has again demonstrated that the boys cross country program is outstanding by winning 26 cross country state titles. And whereas these young men represent the finest quality and dedication of youth willing to work hard to succeed, thereby bringing pride and prestige to the city of Elmhurst and to your community high school. And now therefore I, Peter, PDC, Annie III, 
Mayor of the City of Elmhurst, do hereby proclaim December 7, 2009 as York Community High School Boys Cross Country Day in the, in, in the City of Elmhurst. In honor of the York Community High School Boys Cross Country team for the accomplishments of this team and for their outstanding performances here in 2009. God bless everybody. Coach. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. And he's telling the truth. When he was at York on our team for four years, we won every year. And uh, it's a privilege for us to be here, and it's an honor to be here. And just look at those guys. They're not only good runners and good students, but they're good citizens. And that's part of our job. But first, to, uh, I have two assistants, Clyde Ware. I think he forgot the meeting tonight. But to Mr. Jim Hedman, stand up and have a nice hand for Coach Hedman right here. Coach Med Hedman was a key runner 30 years ago. In 1978, we won the state title, and he was one of our top runners. And now he's back in Elmhurst, and he's helping me coach. And he's got two sons that are standing up here, and uh, they're only juniors. Uh, we went to the uh, state meet this year with three seniors and uh, four juniors. Um, and we read a lot of adversity. I mean, this was a tough year for York of Elmhurst. At the beginning of the year, we thought we were shoe in to win the state meet, but our number one guy <laughs> our number one guy never ran one single meet. I defy to find another team in the state that could lose their number one guy and still get a trophy. And then the topper was on the Monday before the state meet, Shadrach shows up and says, I did something to my foot over the weekend, found out it was broken. And he ran in a state meet with a broken foot. He's our number three guy. And yet we still got a trophy, and they say adversity makes the man, and we sure proved that this year. Uh, we went to the Midwest Regional, and Loyola was there, and Nipah Valley was there, and we won the Midwest Regional by close to 30 points. Went to Portland this back week, last weekend, and I'm exhausted because that's a tough trip for an old guy. Four, four hours out, four hours back, and all I did was, I thought I was in the Army. Walk here, walk there, get on a bus, walk there, stay in the line, wait for the food. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, our effort, uh, even though it wasn't as best as we wanted, we finished, there were 22 teams there, the 22 best teams in the country that had to fight to get out there, and we ended up 13th out of 22, which uh, when you consider that there were 600,000 runners ran cross country this past fall in this country. And 6,000 of them qualified to get into the eliminations all over the country, eight regions. And when we finally got out there, there were like 400 people. So these guys are in the top 400 cross country runners in the whole United States. And I know they feel bad about 13th, but we'll take it. You went there, we got experience. And in that meet, Alex Mimlitz was the only freshman in the meet. Now, he wasn't way up in the front, but at least he ran a little faster than the girls ran, so that's not too bad, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm very proud of these guys because they never gave up, and we kept waiting for Adam Cecil to come back, and when we finally found out he wasn't coming back, we had to tighten up the bootstraps. And I just want to make a couple statements about the York program. In 50 years, we have brought back a trophy to this town 42 times. That's not bad. 26 first, 12 seconds, four thirds. And that's a heck of a record, and these guys have maintained that legacy, and I'm really proud of every guy. Now, the mayor's got a nice proclamation for you, and I don't know if your name is on it, but we're just going to call your name. You come up, you get to shake the mayor's hand, you get to shake the hands of all the council members, and I, I just like a great hand for the whole team before I start introducing right here. very much. Um, you're probably wondering why there's so many guys up there when only seven can run in a state meet, but we always take eight alternates to the state meet, underclassmen, so they can run the course and have a time trial and be ready for the next year. And we got three of our six managers here tonight, I think, that went to the state meet. And when you have 185 guys and just three coaches, the managers are guys that really support us. Uh, our number one manager that 
paid his own way and went out to the national meet and was running a show out there. Uh, and he's a senior, and we are going to miss him. And you're going to come up and get the first award. This is David Baker. Come on up, Baker. Next guy is a senior, and uh, well, I'm glad you made it here because Bobby is usually he'll be late to his own funeral. I mean, he's <laughs> he made it, and uh, the house has been with us four years, and uh, just did a great job for me this year. I got one more page you got to take home tonight to type, so don't get out of here. Congratulations, Good luck. Bobby. I call him the house, but his name is Housing. Come on out here, Robert. And the last manager, he's only a junior. He's coming back. Fake, you got to show him how to do that four charts, you know, about how we go to for next year. Uh, Clyde Ware, my assistant, got him from his special program, and this guy has developed in a terrific manager. This is Jeremy Hare. I call him Hair Off. Here he comes. And now we'll try to find the alternates in no special order. Although I think uh, I'll introduce the guy that won the time trial on Friday. He's only a junior. Uh, unfortunately, he went to IC his first year, but then he got a little more intelligent, came to York. Uh, any IC people, I apologize. But uh, he did a terrific job for us this year. He's a junior. He won the time trial Friday. Dylan, right here. Come on out. Another guy, I think he's about 90 pounds and about four foot 11, but he's tougher than a cob. And he's a junior. Adam Varnas, come on out here. Uh, let me see. Another junior. Good job. Great potential. Matt Simo, come on out here. I don't know if people remember Henry Kissinger, the old great politician, and we got a guy named Kissinger, his name is James, but I call him Henry. He solves all my problems. James, <laughs> come on out. <laughs> Dylan, did I forget to mention your last name was Lad? But I, put, I think I might have. I'm sorry about that. Congratulations. Uh, I'm trying to think, I got Barnes. I'm looking for my other alternates. Are all alternates taken care of? Oh, yeah, for the state meet, Alex was an alternate and didn't get to run because Shadrach decided he was going to run, and that was a dumb statement by myself for letting him do that. He almost killed himself. But this guy is one of the best freshmen in the United States, and he's got three more years. Wow. Alex Mimlitz, right here. Next guy was uh, our third man the whole year. Broke his foot the Monday of the state meet on Friday. We didn't run him all week. And Friday he came to me and said, I think I can do it. And he was a senior. And the bottom, bottom line was if he did well, we were going to be OK. If he didn't do well, we had nobody that could replace him. So he ran on a broken foot. And he was our seventh runner. And I'm very proud of him. He's a senior, Matt Shadrack shot right here. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out my next guy. Great work. job. Look at those two. Our top two guys got those green jackets on or something. <clears throat> but you got to wait your turn. Okay, let's look and see. Let's go to the twins next. Mr. Hedman's got two sons. Uh, one of them, uh, most of the time, was our third guy, sometimes our fourth guy, sometimes our fifth guy. And, and he looks just like his brother, so I play it safe and call him one and two. But I usually call one, two, and two, one. I get screwed up. We're going to introduce one. First, our number three, four, and five guy the whole year, and that's Ronald Hedman, right here. Great hand. Junior. <laughs> He's a junior. And then uh, the other half of the Head Twins, this is number two. He comes to my office every day. He opens the door real quiet. I'm on the phone. He stands behind me for about three minutes. I don't even know he's there. And then they turn around. Two. Never says a word. Yep. 
Gotcha. That's it. He leaves. <laughs> anyway, he was our fifth guy, sixth guy, seventh guy, fourth guy, but a great guy coming back for next year, a junior. This is Tom Hedman, two. <laughs> Then our number four, he was a four guy, some meets, three guy, some meets, five guy, some meets, seven guy, some meets. Just depends how he feels. He's an ex hockey player. He's tougher than a cob. He's only a junior. Nick Gornick. Come on up, Nicky. Congratulations. And then we had two of the best runners in the country. Um, Saturday, you wouldn't know it because they got a slow start, and by the time they got to the first quarter, Schmitty was our first guy in about 90th place, and the course goes down to about 15 yards wide, and when you're in 90th place and you got two and three quarters to run and you can't pass anybody, it makes it very difficult. You get beat up, you get knocked down. Uh, uh, Driggs lost one shoe. Uh, Mimlitz lost one shoe. Uh, Nicky fell right in his, well, he fell right into one of those hay barrels, and was laying there. Lucky he didn't get killed. So it was a tough warrior battle. But these two guys ran one and two the whole year for us, the whole year. And uh, they were second and third in the state meet. I, I think Smitty was 32nd out of 200 runners in the national meet. And I think Driggsy was 47th with one shoe on and one shoe off. So I'll introduce my number two guy. He's a junior. And you're going to be one of the top guys. And, and even if that blue Hungarian comes back, you can beat him, all right? <laughs> He's illegal. Remember that. Junior, Jack Triggs, right here. <laughs> and our number one, he stepped up and replaced Adam Cecil as number one guy. He's a leader. He's a warrior. Uh, second in the state meet. Uh, Driggs, he was third. He was second. Uh, in the national meet, he was our first guy in 32nd place. Uh, he was up in the top of almost every single race he ran. When he came, you better be tough or he's going to whip you. And I'm very proud to introduce to you our number one guy, voted co-most valuable of our team and voted captain of our team, Andrew Smith. Smith off. I'll tell you what, adversity makes the man, and these guys are tough, and now Coach Evans has taken over in track, and they're going to have a great track year. I'm very proud to have just finished my 50th year coaching that cross-country team at York, and as long as I can take a step, I'm going to be there. I just love what I'm doing, and so does Coach Edman. Thanks, man, and thanks for having us, Pete. The man of York. And Joe Newton, who uh, is legendary. Uh, you know, there's only, I believe, only one high school coach that I know of that's ever been asked to be an Olympic coach. And it's this guy right here in 1988. was the first high school track coach ever asked to, from a high school level, coach the Olympics. And uh, that's, what, that's, what, you know, that's what makes this happen, you know. Having a legend like this, having guys like Hedman that ran for Joe come up the ranks and, and coach. So, uh, but this is Elmhurst right here. God bless, guys. Thank you. You're all free to go because we're going to have a probably a long meeting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, Coach. All righty. As the room empties, I ask uh, at this time uh, we go on to <laughs> item number six: uh, receipt of written communications and petitions from the public. At this time, if there are any, uh, if you could please uh, bring those up to the dais here, present the, those to our, our city clerk, Patty Spencer. Anybody that would like <clears> to submit <throat> written communication and/or petitions. From the public at this time, if you could please submit those to uh, Patty Spencer, our clerk here. All righty. I see you know that seeing that we don't have any petitions or written communications, I will before I enter into the public forum. I just wanted to kind of say a few words. Um, 
this has been a long journey. Uh, when, when we ran for office, we knew we were going to be facing rough, about, relatively about a $4 million shortfall in next year's budget. We've watched our pennies. We've cut where we've had to cut. Uh, we've made almost a almost million dollars in cuts just, just between when I got elected and now. And I thank the council for helping me along with those cuts. Um, virtually everybody agrees that we have, the only way we could solve this, we had a 24 member task force that voted 23 1 to, uh, to, to make revenue enhancements um, of a, a slightly larger amount that we're talking about tonight. Uh, we had a, a private consulting company that looks at private sector companies, corporations, come in. We did that because we want to try and run this as much of a business as we can, but it is different. Uh, but this private company came in and gave us an evaluation to back this up as well, too. Um, virtually every alderman, including the mayor, feels that we need to bring revenue in. And some, some may have voted for uh, a $210 increase. There was four of us that did that, almost a $3 million increase in revenue. Um, some of us set a wall at 288, uh, and the task force was a 259 uh, threshold. The last several months of sales tax has been off quite a bit, and, uh, and that's virtually what mirrors our deficit is sales tax. It's not that we're overspending. It's not that we ha have fluff, because believe me, we don't have any fluff. Um, but we have revenues that we've been used to, car, car sales, that are completely off. We have building revenue that is completely off. Unfortunately, it's a perfect storm, and our, our, our residential property taxes have been subsidized for many years, and this is a reality check that we must deal with now tonight. So it's not an easy decision, but virtually all of us know that we have to do some sort of an increase, depending on who you talk to, but, but um, for virtually every alderman except for one, so, um, and, and the mayor definitely agrees that this has to happen. The only way we can run this business and, and give a quality service town, which we all expect, uh, is to have the, the ability to keep the police out there, the firemen out there, all the, all the different services that we offer, the senior services. Uh, and quite frankly, the seniors will take this hit the least financially because most of them are in tax freezes. But if we have to make cuts, unfortunately, they might be the most impacted. So that, those are the tough decisions that we have up here as, as elected officials to make. And we care about our constituents. We care about you. We want to give you the best bang for our buck. Um, and we will do that. So at this time, I'd like to open up the public uh, hearing to the public. Uh, anybody from Elmhurst uh, has, uh, if they would like to raise their <laughs> hand, uh, I will recognize them, and uh, I will grant you three minutes. I please ask that after I recognize you, uh, that you give your name and address, and then uh, you would have three minutes to speak, okay? So um, uh, the, uh, it, okay, I will call the lady on, on the aisle here first, in the red, it's, there we go. And if you can go up to either one of the microphones on the side there, that would be great. Liz, Liz Ambrosi, 139 Oak Street. Good evening. I come here tonight to express my opposition to the proposed property tax increase and to express my disappointment in our elected officials. I find it completely irresponsible of the city to increase taxes at a time when people are losing jobs and unable to pay their mortgages. I also believe that the city has been wasteful with the taxpayers' money through its many ventures, including the most recent decision to spend millions of dollars on a parking lot at the corner of Larch and First. Not only is a parking lot not a necessity when the city is millions of dollars in debt, but what is even more disturbing is that of our 14 aldermen, only a few found issue with the fact that there was no competitive bidding allowed for a project of such magnitude. I have been watching some of the more recent city hall meetings posted on the city website, and one thing is clear. This panel is not very welcoming to proactive, inquisitive problem solvers. The motto here seems to be be quiet and speak only when you are spoken to. Well, I, for one, do not think that this is how a democratic system works. I live in Ward 1, and I happen to believe that my aldermen, Paula Peza and Diane Gutenkopf, are two of the finest representatives I could ask for, always questioning, researching, and working very hard in order to protect the best interest of our ward. 
One would think that this behavior be applauded and certainly encouraged by the city and its leaders, but this is clearly not the case, as I witnessed the offensive way in which Ms. Gutenkoff and Ms. Pe Peza <coughs> have been repeatedly addressed and disregarded when inquiring about the city's finances. Please remember this. When my elder person sits up there and speaks, she is speaking for me and the rest of her constituents, and we have that right to be heard. Paula and Diane, I thank you for sticking to your values and firmly pursuing to keep our property taxes down. For the other aldermen who do not find it necessary to put effort into this dissecting the city's expenses and figuring out a way to cut the fat, I ask that people of this town remember this in future, future elections. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lombrosi. Uh, one of the rules I, is that we do not applaud until after, actually we don't applaud at all, because it's offensive to people that are for and against the different subject matters. So I will repeat that again, and um, I will enforce that. Uh, we are here to uh, hear the public, but not applaud the public, okay? Uh, the gentleman down in front here, thank you. Oh, where do I start? Uh, the first part of the meeting I really liked. I like to see the unity in this town, and yet, Sir, can you state your name and address? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. uh, Jim Court, 255 Southwest Avenue, Elmhurst. Um, I think there's two kind of people. There's people who tend to prefer to protect the status quo, and they're important. There are people who really like innovation and problem solving, and they're important. And it's kind of a hard and fine line to balance the two and meld the two together so that you get the best result. What the woman said had some truth to it. I think these voices, Paula and Diane, are, are good citizens, part of a, a good democracy. Uh, they're voices that we need. I want to comment to Norm, if I could. I like Norm Leader very much. He's a very bright man. He said last time I was here that the city has a charge different than uh, private organizations, and he's correct. I, I disagree with Norm only from the point of view that I think what the citizens want is for us to operate efficiently like a business. The city of Chicago has 20 guys standing around, one guy's working. Our residents don't want that. Um, and there's a one suggestion I would make to you and the Park District. I've talked to a lot of public employees. I've talked to a lot of uh, park employees. And there is a, a tendency to believe that they're not listened to, that we operate in a little bit of an authoritarian model, and that's typical of most governments, so we're not alone. But I think they bring a lot to the table and could help us get through these very difficult times for the whole country, not just Elmhurst, not Villa Park. This whole country is facing difficult times, and we have to pick the best and the brightest ideas and, and work together and treat it like a business, and thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Court. Anybody else for public uh, comment here? Uh, the gentleman down in front here? Oh, no, uh, in front, I'll, I'll call on you next, sir. Thank you. No, 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 sir, in the front. That's okay, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the front. Yeah. Lou Gargleone, 126 Willow Road. Gargleone spelled just the way it sounds. Uh, it seems to me that considering the problems financially that we're having right now, it's hard to imagine why they spent, I'm sure, millions of dollars to build a new fire station on the south end and tear down a perfectly good building that existed instead of perhaps merely putting out an addition. Uh, in addition to that, there was the construction at the city center and by the police station, which I'm sure could have been put off for a short period of time till times were better. Uh, we all have to live in a budget, and it's about time that the city officials started spending our tax money like it was their own. I'm retired, and fortunately, I'm not pitched for funds. I, I get along quite well. However, there are a number of people in this town who are hurting, who, who can't afford 100 here, 100 there, 
It's like a Chinese water torture, drip, drip, drip. So I think it's time that they start looking at all these expenses that can be put off. And when times are better, instead of spending every last dollar, save a little for the rainy days that always come sooner or later. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else for public comment? This gentleman there in the cream shirt. There you go. Here, it's you. Tan shirt. We need it. Thank you. Uh, my name is William McDonald. I live at 264 West Madison. Uh, when I purchased my home 12 years ago, it's a small three-bedroom ranch, 1,500 square feet. My taxes were about $3,800. With a new increase, they will be over $7,000. That's an increase of 57%. Inflation during that time was about 25%. The difference that the taxing bodies of DuPage have taken from me is 32% extra. What justification can these taxing bodies have for raising taxes 32% more than inflation? I look around and I have very poor sidewalks and cracking in my curbs. Uh, the library has been added, but that amounts to only about 5% extra on my taxes. I believe that the extra taxes have come to have been given to the municipal salaries and pensions. Nowhere in the private sector that I'm aware of, and if I can find what I'd like to get that job, can I get 75% of my last four years of service after serving 30 years? That's a long time. But to get 75% of, let's <coughs> say, your salary was $60,000, you're going to be making around $45,000. That amounts to about a million dollars CD in the bank at the present rates. I admit that the schools are two-thirds of my taxes, and you're, you are not responsible for these budgets, but you do have influence over the schools and the school board, and you have a bully pulpit. You should be sticking up for us, telling the teachers that their salaries are way out of whack, and their pensions are even farther out of whack. The Park District uh, just announced that they're going to have a small tax increase because they didn't want to cut any programs. But they never, and you people, never have any compunction coming to us to saying, you will, by law, and we will demand that you pay us more money. Nobody's at all sorry about asking for more taxes, yet they can't cut a kid's little program in the park district. Uh, the new members of, of this council were supposed to be different. I don't see them any different. I see them as big tax and spenders. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else for public comment? The gentleman in the cream sweater here on the aisle. My name is, can you hear me? My name is John Stump. I've been at 407 Arlington Avenue. I've been a resident for 45 years. Raised four kids here who got married and gone to school here. And one kid lives here over in Poplar with five kids. I protest any tax increase for anything. Um, I know you've probably gone through the budget and cut some, but I've run some budgets for the government research and things. And then all the drill, you add stuff in there, hoping they're going to cut some. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. Uh, our church has a lot of people who are unemployed. We're taking money up for them. My one son works for a big company downtown, which I know you'd all know if I mentioned it. Has fired a lot of Deadwood and hiring people that are way overqualified for what he's paying them. The other kids who work in private industry are not getting any raises. They're not complaining, but they're still working. I know you talked about a gas increase of a penny. How many of us have driven other towns? We can go north, south, east, even east, not south to camp, but can go west and get gas cheaper. There aren't that many stations in town. I'm not a gas station owner, but I'll drive somewhere else to get gas. So I, you're probably the only government body left that we have any faith in, because the state is getting crap. I know whatever the federal government's going to do, it's going to raise our taxes for our great-grandkids. So by raising taxes, you're on the bubble now, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not mad, but I do plan to get even. I'm an old dude. <laughs> I used to program mainframes at the Bureau of Standards and Fortran and Machine Language many years ago. The only guy here who's seen a big machine like that is that guy over there. I'm adequate in email. 
My daughter-in-law, who's Irish, is adamant. She came by my house to tell me to come down and protest. And with five kids and all the organizations she's into, I pity you. Good night. I know you have a tough job, though. And I think you did good for not doing the casinos. Because I, my wife's from Montana. I've been out there 35, 40 times. Every little town has them. Down Great Falls, you can't go in any place. There's a chain restaurant or a big store that doesn't have them. Some boxes have five or six. The women in the back of rooms smoking, gambling away their money. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Anybody else for public comment? Uh, this woman up here. Hello, my name is Rita White. I live at 468 Cottage Hill, Elmhurst. Uh, we moved into our house, the same house we live in now, 16 years ago. Our taxes were $2,200. Now they're $9,200. We have made some improvements to the house, but that's a pretty big tax increase. Uh, I'm in my 40s. I've got a kid in college. I've got a kid at the high school. I've got a kid in private school at the great IC grade school. Uh, my income has been cut. I'm a real estate appraiser. We all know what the real estate economy is like right now. Um, it's hard. It's hard to come up with this money and every year it goes up and up and up. It's about five, you know, it's close to $500 a year. That's a lot of money every single year. And our household has had to cut back. I, I heard you, uh, Mr. Mayor, mention that the city has made budget cuts, and I'm sure you have, but maybe we need to look a little bit deeper before we're always going back to the taxpayers and asking them for more money at a time when they really can't afford to give anymore, given the current job situation and the state of the economy. Thank you. Thank you, Miss. Anyone else for public forum? Uh, gentleman <coughs> right next to her. There you go. <clears throat> Dan Vandermullen, 156 Lawndale. Um, I'd like to thank the members of the City Council as well as everyone else who has worked on our city budget. I understand that it's inevitable that we will see an increase in our property taxes given the budget deficit. I hope that you will continue to be open to looking for ways to reduce the level of the pro proposed increase. Last year, my property taxes went up by $500. This year, they'll increase by $500 again. In order to have $1,000 to pay those taxes, I need to earn about $1,300. <laughs> Property taxes are unlike any other expense in my budget because they have no relationship to how much I earn or the level of services I use. If my electric or heating bill goes up, I can do things like turn off the lights or turn down the temperature. If I can't afford cable or internet service, I can call and cancel it. Even my income taxes vary depending on how much I earn not so with property taxes. In the past, our city has kept our taxes low by charging us separately for services we use. We pay for sewer and water based on usage. We purchase refuse stickers for additional cans of garbage. We purchase city stickers based on how many vehicles we own. We buy pool passes and pay for park district programs we use. I believe the city should extend this equitable way of funding services to other areas. The historical museum, for example, Admission could be charged to fund 50% of its operating budget. Those who use the museum would still receive the high level of service at half the cost of what it takes to run the museum. <coughs> and the city would gain between $350,000 and $500,000 in revenue. Last year, the city brought in about $7 million in property taxes. The historical museum's budget was about $1 million, which was equal to about one out of every seven dollars the city has received from property taxes. In the past, when times were good, this may have made sense. We all know that from an economic standpoint, times are not good now. For many of us, the increase in our property taxes outpaces our ability to increase our income. Those who want to downsize are unable to because of the slow pace of home sales. There are over 100 homes in various stages of foreclosure in Elmhurst. Some residents are struggling just to put food on the table. Paying based on what we use is not only reasonable, it's the right thing to do. 
It builds character and a sense of personal responsibility. We do it su successfully in other areas of our city government. I think we should do it for the historical museum. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Gentleman in the back with the red sweater on? <laughs> Burgundy sweater? There you go. Hi, Jerry Scola, 882 Parkside. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're, you're truly caught between a rock and a hard place, and I, I, I feel bad for you. I, I, I really do. I know I'm, I'm a salesman, and it's, it, it's tough. Sales are down, and uh, everybody wants more money. Nobody, nobody wants to pay more. But every time that I've needed the city, the city has been there. Uh, we had uh, some flooding problems on Parkside uh, about a year and a half ago. The city sent, uh, sent trucks out there. They found a problem. Every hard rain since, we haven't gotten a drop. And I'd like to thank you very much for providing those types of services. Uh, fortunately, uh, I have not had to call on police or fire, but I know that if I need them, they're there. Guys, you got a, a tough job. We'd love to see you raise uh, revenues in, in some other way, but if you can't, you can't. And what's being proposed is an extra $20 a month to keep the services that we currently have, I think it's a no-brainer. Thank you very much for all of your hard work. Thank you, sir. Uh, the gentleman in the back there with his hand up. There you go. My name is Claude Pogacher. I live at 566 West Gladys. So if you could speak into the microphone a little bit better. Surely. There we go. Thank Surely. you, sir. I was here last meeting. What commentary came out of this meeting was a commentary at the last meeting. And it achieved nothing. But I was taught in school about 250 years ago, the people of this country try to settle this problem about taxes. This body in no way reflects that. Over the years, not only have you spent all the money from the larger houses, condos, and everything else, you went out and issued bonds that now we're going to pay for. We were paying for them in the past, but now we're really going to pay them. The people are telling you they can't afford your vision. You all came to the people in this town and asked them to vote for you, that you were going to represent them. And after the election, the public be damned. You've got your agenda, and the public is going to live with it. The city management is the same way. You guys haven't even voted on the taxes, and I got a city manager already planning to buy property when you guys are six million in a hole. He isn't going to do it tomorrow, but he's going to do it, and we're going to have to live with it and we're going to get another parking garage, we're going to get another fire station, and if we don't like it, it's too damn bad. And I've come to the conclusion, gentlemen, that either you all sit up there, and you're all deaf, or you plug your ears, or whatever you do, and that holds for the ladies as well. We can't afford you. People are trying to save their homes and trying to put food on the table, and you guys spin us into a six million dollar hole. And you're going to do it again. And you're going to run for election again, and you're going to come up with the same spiel. We will go to the council and we will represent you. I don't know who you represent. I don't know if you came off of Mars last night. If you've never picked up a paper, if you've never listened to the radio, these people in this town and in this state and in this country are hurting. They don't have money to give away. Ten seconds, sir. You're hurting because nobody's buying. Thank you, sir. Uh, gentleman there, Mr. Darley. Hi, Paul Darley, 252 May Street. 
Uh, first off, I applaud your uh, action in setting up a committee to research uh, both expenditures and revenue op options. I think you uh, really re reached across a broad spectrum of uh, folks from across all of Elmhurst. Nobody wants a tax increase, myself included. I guess I would simply ask as things do begin to improve that we take those things into consideration and continue with our um, our conservative spending or that we're, the approach that we're taking on now with more conservative spending. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Darley. In the back there, gentleman with his hand up. Joe Velpo, 459 May Street. You know, the people that are working, that once were working and had a job are now taking part-time jobs. I have uh, two people on my block alone that used to have excellent jobs and they're gone. Tonight, one of them is working at Cole's department store. In the morning, in the, uh, excuse me, in the morning he's at Cole's. In the evening, he's at Sears. Now, how much do you think he's making? There's people out there that are struggling. If they had a job, they don't have it now. Maybe that's the reason why they're not here. It's because they're working two, two jobs at minimum pay to pay their bills, to pay their taxes. Mayor, you know one of them on May Street. Do you guys ever think about that? Do you ever think about the person that's working part-time jobs to feed their families, to send their kids to school? They might be uh, on a disability. I sure know what it is. I know what it is because I was born on the streets. I know what hard times are. Do you really know what hard times are? I really don't think so. I really don't. You gotta see it first. You know how many people I helped out just going to the store? Tell my wife, hey, you know, I know they need help. You know, whatever you see on sale, pick it up. Guess what? I'm on pension. I have a little feelings for somebody that's in that predicament. I sure hope that uh, you take this in consideration. And think about those people. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Heslop. I feel like I have to defend you guys tonight. Um, and I normally don't do this. But I do want to say congratulations on the $2.5 million grant money from the Metra um, to do the um, improvements downtown. I really do think that that's um, a good thing, a wonderful thing. Um, also, the city center improvements were all done by a grant, so therefore no taxpayers' money were utilized for that. So even though you know it may look frivolous, we got it. Um, and also the park district, those of you that do utilize it, they gave a 10% discount on every single last program starting from last year all the way until now, including preschool programs for the kids. And in some instances, this was the only way that parents could afford to send their kids even to preschool. And pool passes were decreased from $25 to $20 this past summer. And in a lot of ways, that was every single kid here in Elmhurst summer was going to the pool period. So, you know, I feel like I have to, you know, defend you guys, and I'm normally not the person who's defending you. Um, Thank you. 
<laughs> but on that note, um, there are some things that I would like to have clarified. And um, one of the things was the recommendation of the Citizens Task Force was a $259 increase per $400 value um, of, the of a home, and it was deemed too little. So the, because the cuts were recommended, that were, they were called draconian. Now the new recommendation was 289, and then all of a sudden, Alderman Hipskin comes up with this wonderful algorithm that no one can tell me what this algorithm is, and we're now looking at a $255 increase. Um, what is it? What's going to be necessary? What really will carry this, um, this, this city for the next year? And um, beyond that, um, you know, many, I can't accept the response that, um, you know, Alderman Hipskin's the chairman of the Finance Committee, and so therefore he has everything to back it up. Um, I don't see it because I've asked and no one can give it to me. Um, and no matter what way you cut it or no matter what way you look at it, a $255 increase on top of a $325 increase is a 78.5% increase from last year. So I don't care which way you look at it, whatever you want, you want to look at it, people are looking at an almost 79% increase in their municipal taxes, and I realize it's the municipal taxes. Um, the city council policy has always been to keep it as low as possible, I realize that. Um, and however, getting to the point of drawing down our working cash fund to basically almost zero is not an acceptable policy anymore. So we need to look at different policies. Um, also, the policy of abatement, while it was wonderful when we were flush, now needs to be looked at in a different in a different way. Ten I don't want I don't want services cut, and I sympathize with everyone. Thanks. Thanks, Ms. Heslop. Gentleman uh, in the back there. Uh, Bill Trudeau, 558 Fairview. Um, I met my wife just a little over 30 years ago when she was 17 and a student at York. Um, her dad was a popular teacher, Bob Paddock, that many of you may have had for driver training back in the day. Um, we married in 1981. She's been a stay-at-home mom since 85, and we've been in our current home since 93 on Fairview. In April of this year, she had a persistent cough and went to the doctor thinking she had a bronchial infection. She was diagnosed with stage 3B lung cancer. Uh, my guess is that most of you are thinking to yourself, does she smoke? Given that the answer is no, I'll bet that no one in the room asked themselves about the number two cause of lung cancer, what the radon level in her home was. Radon's a radioactive gas produced by the breakdown of naturally occurring uranium in the soil. The US EPA action level for excessive radon exposure is four picocuries per liter of air, whatever that means. Our home had a level of 13.1. At that level, 18% of the people exposed will die of lung cancer. According to the Illinois Emergency Management Agency, 22% of the homes tested in Elmhurst are positive for excessive radon levels. I have two homes in Elmhurst, and 100% of mine were high. Look around the room and realize that 19, 19 of you live in homes with an excessive radon level, and three of you will die because of it. This isn't just Elmhurst. The percentage of homes testing high in Addison is 44%, Bensonville 43%, Villa Park 33%, Wooddale 45%, North Lake 50 You can check this at radon.illinois.gov. The cost of a home test kit is $45 for a do-it-yourself kit and about $175 for a pro to come in and do it thoroughly. If your home tests high, the cost of getting it fixed is about $1,200 through a licensed radon mitigator. Compare that to the current cost of keeping a loved one alive. Since April, my wife has had nine rounds of chemo at a cost of $56,000 per treatment. Just one of those drugs, one called Avastin, is $32,000 per dose. Bear in mind, this is every three weeks. This doesn't include all the testing that was done to complete the diagnosis or the hospital or the doctor charges. Our health insurance has paid out a little over a million dollars since April. Jeez. When you get lung cancer, by the time you have a symptom, it's terminal. When we found out in April, the oncologist told us that without treatment, she had four months. She didn't, all she had was a cough. With treatment, the average time was 14 months. The five-year survival rate is 17%. Imagine now hoping that your loved one will beat the odds only to realize that your insurance caps out at $5 million. Sounds like a lot. You lose everything you've worked for your whole life to keep that person alive because she's now lo no longer insur insurable due to the pre-existing condition. 
Tonight you're going to vote on an or ordinance to allow real estate open house signs and garage sale signs to be allowed in the public right-of-way, even though another ordinance regarding sight triangles expressly prohibits the most common placement on the street corners. Stop wasting time and energy passing ordinances that benefit business at the expense of public safety. I ask that you require radon testing of homes in Elmhurst, whether through a pre-sale requirement or come up with some way of really warning people about the danger, not just putting a paragraph in the front porch that no one reads. Send out warnings with the water bill. Make them stand out and be seen. The current Illinois law requiring a home seller to check a box on a form that gets buried in a pile of papers at closing saying he either knows or doesn't know whether his, ham hose, whether his home has radon invites the head in the sand approach. Who's going to check the yes box? Blue Cross sets the value of a human life at $5 million. By not requiring a radon test that costs $45, what is the city of Elmhurst of what price does the city of Elmhurst put on a human life? Don't let ignorance and the quest for the almighty dollar kill people like Sue Trudeau. All she wanted, all she wanted was to raise her kids and make her home in Elmhurst. That decision will take her life. Thank you, Mr. Trudeau. Our prayers are with your wife. And uh, Anyone else for public uh, comment at this time? Anybody? This gentleman here in the green. Good evening. My name's Tony Graham. I live at 254 North Caroline. Been an Elmhurst resident almost all my life, over 50 years. I'd like to say it's a sad day for our town when these consecutive tax increases come to this amount. I wonder how we got to this point. I agree with a lot of what's been said here tonight. I question the immediate necessity of some of the improvements, and I hope that you continue with the conservative approach in the future. My big fear is the temporary tax increase, that once the rates are raised, will they ever come down again? People are watching the budget, our distinguished union management people. Once they see the amount of money you can get from us, they're going to want that the next time around. So I'm hoping that the people who represent us here will be as eager to get the rates lowered when sales revenues increase as they are to raise them at this time. Thanks for your work, and good luck with this project. Thank you. That's a very good point. Anyone else for public forum at this time? Anybody? Okay. Uh, at this time, I will be closing the public forum portion of our meeting. And I, before I go on to our consent agenda, I would just like to say that we, we definitely listen to what the folks have to say out there. It's very compelling. We have a lot of tough stories. We have a, a rebate that is being worked on for those that are, <coughs> are in a position that might, where they might be out of work or having a tough time. And I do know what it's like uh, to see suffering not only in other people's homes that I helped over 10 years, raising a million dollars for children in this town with life-threatening uh, conditions and disabling conditions, but even in my own home, where I had an uninsured daughter for three years, spent in excess of $100,000 on her. Uh, is this the best time for me to be raising taxes? No, it's not. But we have to look at what's best for this community. And when, when you make that phone call and it's your daughter or your husband or your wife that needs that police or paramedic um, and they need the response time, that's where we, we need to make sure we provide service. The senior programs that we offer for transportation, the taxi service rides, the discounted fees that we, we offer, we, we all subsidize those. The counseling services that we give to the, the very people that you're talking to could be possibly in, in, in jeopardy of being cut if we don't do what we need to do tonight. So it's tough. It's very tough for us to make these decisions. But we all agree virtually unanimously that we have to do something. So uh, I do appreciate the input from the community. Uh, this is why we have a public and transparent council. And um, I will now go on to our consent agenda. And uh, at this time, I'd ask uh, if there's anybody that would like to remove anybody, uh, anything, any item from the consent agenda, have a question, possibly vote no. At this time, if you could please let me know which, which item you may want to. F is off, okay. Item number F is being taken off. Yeah, ask for a motion to take item F off, please. Alderman Hipskin, second by Alderman York. Uh, that will be removing item F. Excuse me, we don't need a second on that. And uh, any other items to re be removed? Alderman Gutenkopf? 
Um, yeah, I'd like to remove items Q through W. Q through W. Q. Okay. Anybody else? Wanting to remove? Question? Vote no. On any of the items. Okay. Uh, at this time, I would ask um, for a motion and uh, a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Less items F, G, Q, R, S, T, U, V, and W. Uh, is G being removed? I'm sorry. Is that the uh, Athar property? No. Okay. F is the F. Sorry about that. Okay. So we are removing, just to be clear, items F. Q, R, S, T, U, V, and W. And we'll be approving all the other items that are not being pulled on the consent agenda. At, at this time, I'd ask for a motion and a second, please. Alderman Healy, Alderman Wagner with a second. I'd ask Clerk Spencer to call the roll, please. Healy. Aye. Wagner. Aye. Gutenkopf. Aye. Pezza. Aye. Shea. Aye. Leader. Aye. Rose. Aye. Bram. Aye. Hipskin. Aye. York. Aye. Nibo. Morley. Kennedy. Aye. Holliner. Aye. 14 ayes, zero nays. 14 ayes, zero nays. The consent agenda passes minus items F, Q, R, S, T, U, V, and W. And we'll go to the first item, which is item uh, F. Um, uh, that's, that it's, it's deleted, basically. Okay, so we are deleting item F. And we'll go on to item Q, and it's an ordinance, and I will ask Clerk Spencer to read uh, the ordinance, please. An ordinance abating the tax levy for the year 2009 for the payment of principal and interest accruing upon an issue of $100 million general obligation funding bonds of the City of Elmhurst dated October 15th, 2000. 2003. Okay. Ready? And just one clarification: it was a 10 million instead of a hundred million. Uh, but I this one, yeah, that's okay. That's I'm okay. sorry. And 10 now I ask for a, a motion and a second, please, to put this uh, ordinance on the, on the on the floor, please. Alderman Gutenkopf and Alderman Pezza, and discussion. Alderman Gutenkopf. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Wright. I um I pulled all of the ordinances relating to abating um, bond. Uh, debt obligations because I have a, one question that basically pertains to all of them and that is, um, and I suppose we, we're going to have to go through these one at a time, what percentage of um, this debt service is um, actually going to be abated each of these bonds. One of, the, one, of the, one of the things we talked about uh, three weeks ago at our last meeting was whether or not abating the bonds was going to end up as part of the property tax burden for residents. And when I look at the minutes on page 13, they reflect that Alderman Bram <coughs> questioned whether or not the uh, total tax levy we were discussing included the bond abatement or not. However, there, um, uh, there's, the minutes don't reflect that um, the uh, finance director answered that question and um, there's no answer to this. It just says that we discussed it. So. What I want to know is um, how are we abating uh, debt service on the bonds? What exactly are we abating? Um, is there still going to be debt service that residents will see tacked onto their property tax bills? Thanks, Alderman Gutenkopf. I would defer it to our city uh, manager and, and also our city finance uh, assistant director who is here as well. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. The abatement ordinances as identified by Alderman Gutenkopf, Q through W, are bond issues previously approved that have a required tax levy associated with them, but the city's plan then and now in that they are financed not from the general fund but from other funds of the city. The other funds of the city are adequate to pay those bonds. Therefore, it's the city staff suggestion and my understanding and recollection as discussed at the <clears throat> Committee of the Whole meetings relative to the tax levy for this December that would finance next year, that 
only, and, and frankly also the recommendation from the task force, only those bond issues needing financing from the general fund would not be abated. The others, bond issues which the city has in play would all be abated if they were not financing from the general fund. So Q through W are bond issues that have been identified by previous council action to be paid for by either the parking fund, the capital improvement fund, or the, uh, the capital improvement fund for sewer and water utility rated projects as opposed to a street paving project. Uh, and it therefore were recommended to be abated. A portion, a portion, Mr. Trozine says a portion. So th there are, there's, there's uh, uh, other tax bond issues that are in place that w are not listed, that will not be abated, that, that will result in part of the tax bill. Okay. All righty. Any other questions or discussions on this item? Alderman Nibel? Uh Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. A uh, question for the city manager. Does that mean that the staff has come to the conclusion that the perception is that all the other funds except for the general funds are in a more healthy position and thus we can't afford the abatement? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Alderman. I think I have a question, but I'm not sure. So where this evening would we be voting for the items that are not being abated? That's something I didn't see. And forgive me if I missed it. Well, I'll see manager. The, the more sig most significant item is under ordinance uh, 10B, that, that is the tax levy for the city's general fund, that is the significant area of, of new taxes. And Mr. Trozine, if you could help me, there are a number of tax issues that are financed from the general fund that are not listed to be abated. Those bond issues will, in that they're not abated, will end up on a tax bill in addition to 10B, should 10B be approved. Mr. Trozine, if Mr. Mayor is it acceptable for Mr. Trozine to help me. Sure. Mr. Trozine. All of the ordinances listed in the agenda, a portion of them will be abated and a portion of them will be levied. There will be a debt service levy. So the seven issues, bond issues that we have outstanding, um, total of the debt service is $5,126,300. Of that amount, <clears throat> the amount of debt service that's recommended to be abated is two million seven ninety three six forty nine. As the city manager Borchard mentioned, uh, that's debt service that's allocated to the municipal utility fund, the parking fund, uh, the TIF funds. The amount that <clears throat> the abatements, the the bond ordinances, where you will levy a tax, is two million three thirty two. The difference. So each bond issue has a portion that will be abated and a portion that uh, you'll levy a debt service for, as proposed. Alderman Pesson? So then, under 10B, which I don't know if I can be talking about, because it, but it would pertain to this, is the 2.3 million you're referring to that would not be abated included in that 14.9 figure? In the 14.9? Uh, no. So then I guess the question is where, where exactly are we voting for the portion that's not being abated? That's what I'm, I guess that's my main question. Uh, I'll defer uh, to Alderman Mulliner who's got an eagerly <laughs> hand up here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will t attempt to explain this and I can be corrected by the assistant finance director if I make an error, which I'm quite sure I probably will, but my understanding is that when we issue a bond at that point, what happens is that the paperwork is filed to put the levy forward. And unless we abate that bond, it is automatically collected. 
Therefore, the only time that the levy is shown for putting forth the bonds is at the point where we actually file the bonds or, or create, get the bonds. Okay. The only time that we do anything different is when we abate them, when we say we don't need to collect those dollars. So you will never see an ordinance after the, after the issuing of the bonds to collect a levy for those bonds. What you'll see is an abatement. Does that make sense? Yes. Because we've already done it. For all practical purposes, we've already done it. And in some cases, those levies are for 10 years, 20 years, depending upon what the bond issue is for. So it actually goes forward at that time, and it doesn't come back to us unless there's a change in that. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. I think that's the best way to describe it. Am I correct, Mr. Truslein? Yes. <laughs> Alderman Hipskin, do you have your hand up? Or are you uh, well done, Alderman Moliner. Got our finance guys working hard over here, our chair and, and one of our committee members here. So, uh, Alderman Brown. Yeah, I thought I was straight on this until I heard, I thought I heard the city manager state that these would be paid, or these would be in addition to, the debt levy service would be in addition to. The question I keep coming back around to, and I think what some of my um, fellow aldermen are asking is, is 10B, the tax rate, levy that's being proposed, does that pay for the debt service that we're not abating? Or is that a separate item that needs to be paid for in other means? Mr. Trezine, would you like to answer that? Can, can you repeat that, please? I'm, I'm sorry. Does 10B, that levy, pay for the outstanding debt service that is not the line items Q through W? The, the 10 b the actual tax levy ordinance of 14 million nine uh, that that does not include the debt service that will be levied <clears throat> that does is, not that include. is a separate the, the amount of two million three will also be levied with the other um, bond ordinance abatement so it would be on top of the 14 point nine million proposed correct but in the end the math comes to 255 a house and a 400. Correct. The, the 255 that's been presented covers the general levy of the <clears throat> the city's general fund, which is a portion of this. The 14 million nine includes the library levy, so the 255 dollars includes the general fund increase, the police and fire pension levies, and the debt service um, levies. Very good. Okay. Okay. That's very good. Uh, Alderman Mulliner, in, uh, I, I just, uh, those are really good questions, and I just want to make sure that everybody understands this whole thing really clearly, because this is really important. Um, the money that we're looking at under the ordinance that we're going to pass tonight, 10B, and it really needs to, people really need to understand this, and the public needs to understand this as well, is that it does not include any of those bonds. The, and what happened in the discussion that we had a week ago was, or two weeks ago, or whatever it was, was we kind of muddied the water a little bit by saying that the 255 included everything. It does, but at the time we were really talking about the 14.9. And it kind of confused things because it put the two things together. There's two separate things. The 255 was a total increase or change, and the other was the dollar amount, the actual dollar amount that we were going to levy that was on top of the bonds. Okay. So those are those are good questions, and they need to be clarified, and the public needs to understand that. So you know, I appreciate you guys asking the questions. Very good. Anybody else for discussion? Okay. Uh, at this point, I just clerk uh, clerk Spencer to call the roll and, and item Q, please. Kuznikov. Aye. Peza. Aye. Shea. Aye. Leader. Aye. Rose. Aye. Graham. Aye. Hipskin. Aye. York. Aye. Nibo. Aye. Healy. Aye. Morley. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Moliner. Aye. Wagner. Aye. 14 ayes, zero nays. 14 ayes, zero nays. Uh, that motion, that ordinance does pass. And uh, we will have to call each one of these ordinances individually. Uh, next going to item R. Uh, but I would assume that the discussion should be pretty quick because they're all virtually identical. Uh, so at this point, a motion and a second for item R, please. Alderman Gutenkopf, Alderman Morley seconds. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, I just clerk Spencer to call the roll, please. Gutenkopf. Aye. Morley. Aye. Peza. Aye. Shea. Aye. Leader. Aye. Rose. Aye. 
Graham. Aye. Pipskin. Aye. York. Aye. Nibo. Aye. Healy. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Wagner. Aye. 14 ayes, zero nays. 14 ayes, zero nays. That motion passes. Item S, I'd ask for a motion and a second on that ordinance, please. Alderman Morley uh, and Alderman Nibo. Seconds. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, I'd ask Clerk Spencer to call the roll, please. Morley. Aye. Nibo. Aye. Gutenkopf. Aye. Peza. Aye. Shea. Aye. Leader. Aye. Rose. Aye. Graham. Aye. Hipskin. Aye. York. Aye. Healy. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Wagner. Aye. 14 ayes, zero nays. 14 ayes, zero nays. That motion passes. Now to item T, another ordinance. I'd ask uh, for a second, first and a second. Alderman Rose, Alderman Morley, seconds. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, I'd ask for roll call vote, please. Rose. Aye. Morley. Aye. Gutenkopf. Aye. Peza. Aye. Shea. Aye. Leader. Aye. Graham. Aye. Hipskin. Aye. York. Aye. Nibo. Aye. Healy. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Wagner. Aye. 14 <coughs> ayes, zero nays. 14 ayes, zero nays. That motion passes. Uh, item U, I guess for a motion and a second, please. Alderman Brown, Alderman Shea, seconds. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Bram. Aye. Shea. Aye. Gutenkopf. Aye. Peza. Aye. Leader. Aye. Rose. Aye. Hipskin. Aye. York. Aye. Nibo. Aye. Healy. Aye. Morley. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Wagner. Aye. 14 ayes, zero nays. 14 ayes, zero nays. That the motion passes. Item, on to item V. I ask for a motion and a second, please, to put this ordinance on the floor. Alderman Morley first. Alderman Peza second. So motion. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'd ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Morley. Aye. Peza. Aye. Gutenkopf. Aye. Shea. Aye. Leader. Aye. Rose. Aye. Bram. Aye. Hipskin. Aye. York. Aye. Nibo. Aye. Healy. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Wagner. Aye. 14 ayes, zero nays. 14 ayes, zero nays. That ordinance passes until item W. I'd ask for a motion and a second, please, to put this on the floor. Alderman Gutenkopf motions. Alderman Morley seconds. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Gutenkopf. Aye. Morley. Aye. Peza. Aye. Shea. Aye. Leader. Aye. Rose. Aye. Graham. Aye. Gibskin. Aye. York. Aye. Nibo. Aye. Healy. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Wagner. Aye. 14 ayes, zero nays. 14 ayes, zero nays, that ordinance uh, does uh, pass. And to item a, uh, a nine, excuse me, um, reports recommendations uh, of appointed and elected officials. Um, uh, first by myself, I would uh, like to uh, compliment uh, uh, see our city center uh, uh, director out, out in the back there. Um, compliments to our Elmer City Center for uh, a, a beautiful tree lighting, uh, which occurred that day after Thanksgiving. Um, Mr. Paravola is in the back. Tom Paravola uh, did a great job in making our downtown, I think, look as, as Christmassy and, and festive and holiday-ish uh, as you could possibly think. Uh, it was a great day. Uh, about 500 people came out to celebrate that that uh, that the tree lighting. I know Spring Lo Spring Road had their tree lighting, and I believe the the um, park district did theirs as well too. And uh, kudos to. Uh, the city center folks are really making making our downtown look nice. You know, um, we talk about some of the projects, uh, the streetscaping, the, the redo of the fountain. Uh, Ms. Heslop uh, pointed out uh, of the grant money and the fact that the, the, between grant money and TIF money, none of those dollars came out of the, the, the checkbook. Um, so we have to use those dollars. We work hard to get those grants. Um, our TIF districts are, are award winning. In fact, we were recently asked uh, by the Illinois, Illinois Municipal League to actually uh, send a representative from Elmer's to talk about our award-winning TIFs and how they've worked for our school districts, uh, how we've built the tax base. So City Center, great job out there. Um, I also uh, want to compliment Dan Gibbons. Uh, Thanksgiving, many of us are out there for the Dan, uh, Dan Gibbons uh, Turkey Trot. Over 6,000 people from this, this town came out to raise money for people in need. I know the gentleman in back talked about people in need. One thing I could tell you about this town, we step up. If somebody's sick, if somebody's hurting, Somebody's out of work. Uh, there's no better town than this town uh, that takes care of our own. 
So, um, and I know it. I did it for 10 years, and virtually everybody in this room contributes. Uh, so, and all the ta all the people watching out there, uh, 6,000 people. I was up in the uh, the loft with Dan Gibb as I fired the gun, and uh, what an amazing sight to see that many people come out on about a 10 degree day and rain. <laughs> Alderman Wagner was out there with his knickers in and his Blackhawks. <laughs> Alderman Nibo, uh Alderman Kennedy, I think, ran the time. Would you? Would, I know you were running for uh, time. Yeah, under 27. So, so I uh, appreciate all the all the mm -hmm. elected officials that came out. Alderman Healy was out there. So, um, all all those that came out and attended. Also, uh, recently was the um, uh, the event over at uh, Wilder Park. So, and that was a nicely attended event as well too. So Alderman Pezza there as well, and Gutenkopf, um, and uh, so it was Alderman Nabo as well. So we've got a great community. Special Kids Day uh, was just just happened. I actually brought City Attorney Storino over. I said, we're going for a ride. He goes, where, where are we going? I said, I'm not going to tell you. And uh, over 500 kids with special needs uh, were given a Christmas that they probably wouldn't have gotten unless it was Elmhurst uh, at Wilder Mansion. So very touching kids with disabilities, kids with sickness, kids with cancer. Um, Chief Newbar was out there greeting everybody. Um, that's what this town is all about. You know, when times are tough, we step up. Uh, we're there for our schools. We're there for our parks. We're there for the city. We're there for the people. So um, that's that's my report. Uh, now on item 10, uh, the ordinances. Item A, I'd ask Clerk Spencer to read the ordinance, please, and I'll ask for a motion in a second, please. An ordinance approving and authorizing the execution of an intergovernmental agreement establishing the Northern Illinois Municipal Natural Gas Franchise Consortium. Alrighty, and uh, before we uh, ask for a motion in a second on this ordinance, um, just for belts and suspenders, I'm going to ask for a motion in a second to suspend the rules to vote on the ordinance. At this point, do I have a motion in a second? Alderman Morley, Alderman Hipskin, um, to suspend the rules. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor to suspend the rules? Uh, can we do that by voice votes? Uh, I'll, I'll state by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Now I'll ask for a motion and a second to uh, to put the ordinance on the floor, please. <coughs> Alderman Hipskin, Alderman York, seconds and discussion. Anybody? All righty. Uh, hearing no discussion, I ask Clerk Spencer to call the roll, please. Hipskin. Aye. York. Aye. Gutenkopf. Aye. Peza. Aye. Shea. Aye. Leader. Aye. Rose. Aye. Graham. Aye. Nibo. Aye. Healy. Aye. Morley. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Wagner. Aye. 14 ayes, zero nays. 14 ayes, zero nays. That uh, ordinance um, passes unanimously. On to item B. Do we need to suspend rules on this as well, Ben? Okay. Uh, we will not need to suspend rules. I'll just need a motion uh, and a second. Actually, after Clerk Spencer reads the ordinance, we'll ask for that motion. An second. ordinance for the levy and assessment of taxes for the fiscal year beginning May 1, 2009 and ending April 30, 2010 of the City of Elmhurst, DuPage, and Cook Counties, Illinois. And at this time, I ask for a motion and a second, please, to put this ordinance on the floor. Alderman Hipskin, Alderman York, and discussion. Anybody for discussion? Alderman Brown. Yes, thank you. Um, I think that we um, discussed this three weeks ago in depth, so I don't want to say too much um, in addition to that discussion. <coughs> I think additional residents uh, came out this evening to express their viewpoint on a tax rate increase. Um, I, I do understand that it is rough times. I also understand that um, we really have no choice, as the mayor has alluded to earlier on in the evening, that some type of tax rate increase yeah. is necessary to um, pretty much replenish the funds that are uh, moving closer to the zero mark every day that we're, we're open. Uh, with that said, um, the current ordinance um, that is proposed and before us tonight, um, I, the, the amount, the total tax rate levy, um, I'm not in favor of, and therefore I'd like to make a motion to amend this ordinance. Um, I, I think Alderman Gutenkopf spoke three weeks ago in regards to a meeting halfway point of uh, where we, what was originally proposed and, and her proposal was for $14,005,968. So I would like to make a motion to amend uh, this 
ordinance to replace where appropriate the 14,901,717 with 14,005,968. Okay. We have a second. Do you have okay. Alderman Gutenkopf seconds and um, and discussion. And you know, just so everybody knows uh, what we're doing basically is, is making uh, Alderman Brown is making an amendment to uh, cut the levy by about a million dollars. It's still roughly a two hundred and ten dollar increase on the average home, which this kind of vote went down not too long ago. Um, so they are agreeing that we do need to raise taxes two hundred and ten dollars. I think the the ordinance is at two fifty five. So uh, so just a matter of. You know, I don't know if you had a formula to figure that 210 out or, or if we're just picking a number out, but, but uh, Alderman Peza? That was my question. Are we sh sure of what that amount actually would come to? Or can, can we verify that? Roughly. Uh, is that, was that about ballpark, right, uh, City Manager Rob Borcher? Was it around 210 or 205, I think, when we figured out a $3 million levy versus a four? Foreign change or whatever. It's approximately correct. <clears throat> a little over $200. Uh, can you ask for a, uh, a total rate then? What that would? You know what that rate would be, Alderman Brown? I do not. Um, I was just going off of what we normally do and, and propose a, a total levy, and that was the, the levy of my proposal. Part of that rationale is that uh, we were kind of guided by the task force uh, recommendation and to replenish the working cash fund of $726,000. Um, I see that we can tighten our belts a little bit in regards to our spending and uh, possibly, you know, do half of that replenishment in tough times um, compared to doing uh, a pool of $726,000. A quick point of uh, yeah, Alderman Hipskin. What, what uh, I can work the rate backwards. What's the number that we're going off of? Fourteen million five thousand nine hundred and sixty-eight. Uh, it is uh, in, in the meeting minutes from uh, the last city council. And meeting. that that equates to two hundred and I, I, I want to say two hundred and three or what was the number, approximately? Because I'll, I'll work the rate backwards. And it's a, if it's off a little bit, it won't matter. Like two ten. Not in the minutes. Two what? Th that number's not in the minutes. So it was roughly. A okay, I'll, I'll I'll do the math. I got it. No problem. So I just need to <coughs> While you're doing the math, Alderman Hipskin, I just wanted to make a couple, point out a couple of facts. Um, one thing the task force, I see Kevin Diamond, the co-chair of the task force out there in the audience, one thing the task force wasn't able to see was our last three-month sales tax. Our last three-month sales tax uh, were down nearly half a million dollars, okay? So that's, that's one of the reasons why uh, when we set that wall out there originally, uh, we set it out there a little further because we weren't sure what sales tax would be doing. And uh, knowing that we are now down a half a million dollars more than what the task force has seen, uh, those are some those are some big numbers that we have to realize are going to impact us next year. Um, so just just so everybody understands that, um, you know, we we originally thought when we took office, most of us that a four million dollar deficit, we're looking closer to six or seven million. And the staggering thing is that's on roughly a fifty million dollar general fund. Um, when I was in the school task force along with uh, with uh, co-chairman. Diamond, um, we were trying to figure out a $5 million shortfall on an $84 million budget. And as businessmen, we went in there and tried to, you know, find $5 million on $84 million, and we couldn't do it. Um, so, so now we're trying to, we're looking at 6 to $7 million on 50. So keep in mind, we've got minimum staffing for police and fire. We've got a lot of issues that we really need to uh, make sure we keep in, in place so we can keep the quality of this town in place. So uh, just all things that we need to realize that, that are happening. But a half a million dollars in the last three months, sales tax being down, uh, scares me as a mayor because uh, that, that, those are numbers that we rely on and, and those are numbers that the task force hasn't seen and uh, we're numbers that we have to deal with, unfortunately. So by you cutting that, just keep that in mind. I don't know what programs you plan on cutting. Maybe you have a list of those uh, so that the public knows what you plan on keeping and what you plan on cutting. But um, uh, if you have those, we'd like to know. Because if you want to cut the DuPage, that, you know, the, the right DuPage or the taxi service or the counseling for Metropolitan, you know, all these different things that add up um, mm -hmm. that we take for granted. Uh, but uh, make Elmhurst what it is. 
uh, we have a list of those we'd like to know so that the audience knows what you want to cut. So, so yeah. Would you um, like me to would you uh, like Yeah, I'll give you all of my brown, yeah. Um, I, I think I actually did speak to that. Um, the, what, I, what I'm actually proposing is the working cash fund. The working cash fund from the first day that I stepped into office, I was told, is for rainy days. It hasn't been raining, it's been pouring here in regards to the type of uh, economic times that we've been seeing. Um, I, and I'm not blaming and I'm not saying it's the right direction to go to replenish that fund, but when we're in poor economic times, I'm not sure if we should replenish the working cash fund up to three quarters of a million dollars. If we weren't to replenish that fund at all, that is almost the whole reduction that I am referring to from the current proposal. <coughs> now with that stated, the current ordinance on the table um, is less than the task force recommendation. And if the task force didn't, wasn't able to see obviously the last couple months of sales tax uh, declining, then the current ordinance should also be reconsidered because it is below what they're recommending. The, what, I, what I would like to ask, and I don't know if the assistant finance director's still in the room, um, is that with uh, cash for clunkers, um, if that has been accounted for, because I think there's a two month delay in sales tax from when sales tax were issued to when we actually see it here at the city of Elmhurst. So has, have we seen any benefits from that program? Um, Mr. Trezine is deferring to Mr. Hipskin right now. Actually, it's a question I asked today, so I have the answer for you, but I'll, uh, uh, Mr. Trezine, if, uh, or Mr. Borchardt, would you like to uh, comment on that? I know uh, from what I was told today uh, that uh, it made an impact, but it, w it basically stopped the bleeding. We, you know, every month we've been bleeding, but I'll let the city manager, uh, Borchard, uh, uh, re basically recap the, the cash for clunkers. As, as, as the mayor alluded to, um, he asked that question earlier today, and the answer is that the cash for clunkers did provide a modest increase in sales, as reported by Elmhurst dealers, but that increase was not enough to put the sales tax at all back to old levels. It just reduced the otherwise lower number. So it, it did not turn around some of the negatives we've been seeing. We've so gotten one month, I think we've gotten one month of uh, cash for clunkers reported to Springfield and back now to Elmhurst. And it, it's still a revenue that is under our anticipated revenue. Do we understand how much it has helped thus far in, in dollars? No, we don't have details from the dealers. We've just got the report for the month and comparing that month to previous months and doing a bit of a assessment of what might have happened relative to car sales. It appears to have increased car sales a little bit, but, but not enough to turn around at all the revenue projections for the year. Yeah, okay. Alderman Healy. Uh, just one quick comment specific to cash for clunkers. Um, I, I would be hesitant to make any decisions or changes no, to the no. levy based on one month. Uh, I'm not sure cash for clunkers did anything but pull car sales forward. Um, and until we got a, an extended look at, at what it did, did it, did it just, was it a bubble that went through or did it generate incremental sales? I think it just bubbled the sales and we'll see a decline after ca cash for clunkers ended. I might be wrong. Either way, I'm not com I wouldn't be comfortable making any decisions on that specific program alone. Thank you. Uh, Alderman uh, Leader, and then I'll go Alderman Morley. Uh, it seems to me, I was doing a little simple math here, that um, the difference between Alderman Hipskin and Alderman Brown is about $1 a week. In other words, at Alderman Hipskin's rate, we would be raising the city's property tax levy by $20 a month or $5 a week. And under Alderman Brown, we would be raising the city property tax level levy about $16 a month or 
four dollars a week though in terms of actual dollars there's several hundred thousand dollars there but those are the numbers based on two hundred and fifty five dollars divided by 12 or divided by 52 and you get roughly twenty dollars that's what we are proposing to raise the city property tax levy twenty dollars a month or five dollars a week under alderman hipskins suggested number the number we passed last three weeks ago and under alderman brams uh, suggested number it would be sixteen dollars a month or four dollars a week so the difference being four dollars a month or one dollar a week but it, it just so we understand what we are actually raising here the number we are truly raising is either five dollars a week or four dollars a week or if we split the difference four and a half dollars a week that's about it and that is the entire share of the city property tax levy that is it it's not any more and any other taxes that are raised in elmhurst of course are not being raised by the city of elmhurst they are being raised by the park board they are being raised by the school board they are being raised by the county of dupage they are raised by the council <coughs> but the only thing that we ever raise in the city of elmhurst is this property tax levy period and that is it so that the total amount of taxes that we would be paying as citizens of elmhurst on an average house <coughs> is five hundred dollars five hundred and fifty dollars a year though your property tax bill of course could be seven eight or in my case nine thousand dollars a year of which seven thousand goes to district 205 and one of the things that it suddenly struck me here <coughs> is that the amount of money that we as citizens of Elmhurst pay to District 205, which is not contiguous, the boundaries are not contiguous with the city of Elmhurst, are 1,000% more than we actually pay to the city of Elmhurst. Now, I want to repeat that so it sinks in. The average citizen of a $400,000 house is going to pay 1,000% more. In my case, I'm paying just about 7,000. To the, to the schools and though my tax I'm actually raising my tax more than I'm raising the average person even though I'm now retired and my income is half of what it was last year nevertheless I think this is in the best interest of the citizens of Elmhurst as a whole as a whole taken together and I also you know there was something I read recently in fact I said it about Tom Marcucci uh, at, at his retirement dinner, I, I said there's a difference between a, a politician and a statesman. And I said, a politician will sacrifice the future for the present. But a statesman will sacrifice the present for the future. I'm not saying I am or you are or anything. I'm just throwing that out there because it's something that it impressed me when I said it about Tom, and I hope I can say it about all of you, and I'd be happy to, actually. But, but that's essentially it. I think that a lot of people out there are truly confused as to who is raising taxes and who isn't. Even now, before we raise our taxes, only five cents out of every tax dollar actually goes to the city in terms of property taxes, in terms of property taxes. Now we are raising it. And it's probably going to be closer to 10 cents out of every dollar. But the huge taxes we pay, the big, serious taxes, that thousand percent more that we pay to the school system, that's not the city of Elmhurst. The city of Elmhurst isn't raising your, 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 your uh, District 205 taxes or your park board taxes, any of things like that. There's so much confusion on this issue, and I must admit that when I 
first came onto the city council, you know, I was confused myself. I, I had a, took me a while to straighten it out in my mind. I'm, but I guess I'm trying to say to the public, these things are not simple. I wish they were simple. I really do. But this town got hit so hard. Back in, we went into 08, starting in 08 into 09, we had $14 million in the bank. It just, as the mayor said, we were just hit by a perfect storm. But don't get confused about who is doing the taxing. It's not us. What we're doing is what we're doing now. It's another $5 for a total of $11 a week. That's what, if we pass that $5 tonight, that raise a five or four, it'll be either 10 or $11 a week that you will pay as citizens to the city of Elmhurst. What you pay to those others, we have no control. And when people think we have control, we have no control over the school board. Somebody mentioned, oh, well, we can talk to the school board. Yeah, good luck. We can't, you know that, we just can't. They're gonna do what they wanna do, or the park board does what they wanna do, or the county does what they wanna do. We, can on, we only have control of our fate. And that four to five dollars, or $11 total, that is what pays for your police, and your fire, and your public works. Remember, that's 85% of the budget. Not a lot of room. But, and anyway, just off the top of my head, I don't normally speak that way. I normally speak from a prepared, I didn't do that tonight. It's okay, Alderman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, before I go on to Alderman Morley, I um, just want to interject. The one thing that we do have control over is economic development, the new growth. Yes, and we, we are steering that bus. And that's why this mayor ran for city mayor versus you know school, school board. Um, and, and the task force, uh, Chairman Diamond, Chairman Levin, gave us a strong recommendation for economic development, for building. You know, some things that were sensitive years ago with some people. Uh, now we know we have to. Now we know we need to do progress. We need, we need to put parking garages up so people will come here and, and have parking so they don't go out to other communities. Um, we need to have progress, uh, build buildings, build a tax base. So, so that's what we do have control over, and I, I know a lot of us are really anxious to do as much of that as we can, and that's why we, we continue to, to make, put infrastructure in place so we can keep that progress going. Ultimately, it keeps our taxes low, and that will drive our tax rate down in the long run. So when that subsidy does come back, and we control that subsidy to many degrees, we don't necessarily control the car dealers because that's, that's the market, but the subsidy we control is new growth, and uh, that growth will bring in sales tax, that growth will bring in commercial property taxes and, and also residential property taxes with the new homes. And uh, so we need to be very progressive and, and make sure we embrace growth, and, and that's, that's how we'll build this tax base up and get the subsidy back, because we do want to ultimately keep our taxes low. So yet, provide the best. Alderman Morley? No, pass. Alderman Gutenkoff. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, I have a couple of thoughts. And the first is that I, I seconded Alderman uh, Brand's motion because I thought this was worthy of discussion. I thought um, something that we proposed uh, three weeks ago that would strike a more equitable balance between raising taxes and cutting city services was worthy of a revisit. And I listened to the citizens that spoke tonight, and by my <coughs> count, 13 people spoke. One person expressed um, <clears throat> gratitude for the services that he was receiving for the city, and 12 people in one way or another um, express some concern with what kind of a hardship this property tax increase was going to provide to them. Uh, Alderman Hitskind is interested in calculating what this new number translates to in terms of a tax rate. And I would argue that that's irrelevant. The tax rate is a multiplier number. It is what it is. The real number that we're looking at, the real bottom line, is this total figure that we're trying to raise um, through taxes. and. I'm having an uh, awfully hard time looking at how much money we have to raise and uh, listening to these people who have come here to explain to us how difficult it is for them <coughs> to face this increase, how it's going to affect their everyday life, not the 
amenities of their life. These are people who look like they're already cutting amenities, but how this figure is going to permanently impact them and continue to escalate. And that, those comments combined with the letters and phone calls and emails I've been receiving just convinced me that these hard times are here for all of us and that we're going to have to be very frugal as a city and it makes it very difficult for me to um, support raising these taxes even what sounds like a small amount of five dollars a week or four dollars a week or or whatever this is this is a real figure to these people um, and I really feel that my job up here is to listen to what they have to say and to take into consideration how much of a strain this is going to be and when I think about how many people there are in this town and multiply out the people's comments as a percentage of the residents in town, I know not everybody's going to show up. And I know a lot of people watch this on TV instead of come here. I have to assume that the majority of people speaking are representing a very large percentage of residents of Elmhurst. I certainly haven't gotten a lot of phone calls saying, please raise my taxes. Um, I've gotten an awful lot of phone calls saying, please don't. So. I appreciate that Alderman Hipskin was willing to calculate the tax rate, but I don't know that it's really that necessary. Uh, our rate falls in line with other cities, depending <coughs> on whatever multiplier they need to apply to their total property value to get the amount of money they need to raise. So the rate is a really nice number, but all it does is calculate something to get us to the total dollar amount we're, we're going to be voting on tonight. Um, maybe our rate will be higher or lower than Glen Allen. I don't care. I really don't care. Glen Ellen's got smaller community, fewer houses, they're worth a lot of money, so they come up with a magic number that gives them the total amount of money they need to levy. So we're going to be higher than Oak Brook. Okay, they don't have to levy a property tax. That's fine. Uh, you know, where we fall within the range of the county doesn't matter. Um, Alderman Hipskin uh, did some nice research to look at the rates throughout um, Cook and DuPage and Kane and Lake Counties. That's nice. I mean, it, like I said, it's a, it's a multiplication number that gives us a total dollar value. That's the one number that we need to be focused on tonight. So given the kinds of comments I've heard tonight and the way I really feel about how we need to be operating and how we need to get smarter about how we operate as a city, I don't think I can support a tax increase at all. And, uh, and I appreciate Alderman Bram's attempt at rethinking where we are in terms of a tax rate, but I just, I can't support it. And I, um, I feel very strongly about that. So you withdrawing your motion, or are you? Yeah, I'm withdrawing my second in his motion. Yes. Alderman Gunkoff, are you is that a withdrawal of your motion then or what what uh yeah, no I think that we need to play out okay. this discussion. Okay. No problem. Alderman Pezza. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first thank you, Alderman Leader, for clarifying because I do think sometimes people don't understand that we don't control the school board or the park board. Um, so I think that's important. But you said something that perked my interest and I think I'd like to direct the question towards City Manager Borchert because once again haven't been through this process, so I'm not quite sure. But you mentioned that the only thing we have control of raising is the property taxes. But I know when I get my gas bill, my electric bill, my cell phone bills for the five of us, four of us in my home, and um, pay for my vehicle stickers and my garbage and those types of things, I do see a city tax. And right. so who decides, like, just do we as a council ever decide whether or not to raise those also, or, or how is that decided and when? Yeah. Uh, Alderman Leader? Uh, just to respond, one of the reasons that I tend to speak from prepared notes is that I won't <laughs> make that kind of mistake. <laughs> and, and really, I did misspeak. <laughs> I really misspoke. What I was trying to talk about was primarily this whole question of property taxes. Yes, I agree. and and. 
uh, we do have other fees and we do have, have other, what amounts <coughs> to taxes, but I was only talking about property taxes. I did misspeak and you are correct. Thank you. We do, so we do, we decide that. Correct. Is it correct? That we, that we as a council also decide on those fees? Uh, City Manager Porsche, I'll defer to you on those items. Relative to the municipal tax, that is something that the Elmer City Council approves as a policy. And on the, there is a municipal tax on natural gas, phone use, and, um, and electric use. Okay. All less than 5%. Okay, thanks. Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, hearing none, I'd ask uh, Clerk Spencer to. Uh, uh, this will be this will be on the amendment um, to actually reduce the, the levy about a million dollars, roughly. Um, and as, at this point, I ask Clerk Spencer to uh, to call the roll, please, on the amendment. Bram. Aye. Gutenkopf. No. Hesse. No. Shea. No. Leader. No. Rose. No. Hipskin. No. York. No. Nibo. No. Healy. No. Morley. No. Kennedy. No. Moliner. No. Wagner. No. One I, 13 nays. One I, 13 nays. That motion fails. And now we go to the underlying motion, which is the ordinance uh, to approve the levy. Uh, discussion, I need a, uh, I'm trying to think, motion and second, do we have that on the floor already? Yeah, yeah we do. So uh, any discussion, any further discussion on the actual ordinance itself, on the levy? Alderman Molnar? Molnar? Yeah, I just want to make a couple of comments. Um, I'm, I'm going to support this, however, I, I do have, uh, as everybody does, concerns. You never, you don't want to have to raise taxes if you don't have to. Um, my concern is two things. One is, of course, it's kind of this double-edged sword. This is probably one of the toughest decisions that I think all of us sitting up here for years or even for a short period of time have had to make. Um, my concern is that we've had uh, an opportunity to go through the budget. We've had a, a second, not the budget, but the, the amount of money that we need. Uh, we've had a task force take a look at this, and we're actually looking at a number, uh, as somebody mentioned earlier, that's lower than what the task force recommended. Uh, and that worries me. It also worries me the fact that um, our sales tax dollars are significantly lower than we were anticipating. I mean, we were hoping to see some, some dollars uh, available uh, coming in from the tax, from the uh, sales tax, and that money hasn't come back. Um, this is going to be a, a very tough budget year for all of us, and going through that budget is going to be very, very difficult because we're going to have to cut some areas that um, I hate to say it, people are going to feel the pain a little bit this year, and it's going to be all of us feeling the pain, and it's going to be some of the citizens as we, as we move forward, um, and that's not trying to be a threat or anything else, that's just a statement of fact. Um, we are going to be very short on money, and it's going to be a very, very difficult year. Uh, significant cuts have been made already, um, and I know that the public doesn't get a chance to see all of the information, but there have been significant cuts over the last few years, and over this year especially. Um, we continue to see uh, the city staff working on trying to find other places to, to trim the budget. Um, we're trying to find ways to make this much more effic efficient. Uh, we appreciate the calls that we get that give us some ideas on how maybe we can, we can solve some of these problems. Um, I think the task force has helped us out a lot in giving us some insight as to some things that maybe we should be looking at. Um, I do have to go back and make the, the comment that was made the last time, though. Ultimately, we're the final task force. We're the group that has to make that final decision. If I had my druthers, I'd be asking for the, what we put into the paper, the $15 million, because I think that's the appropriate number for us to ask for. But at this time, I think that we have a number that everybody's pretty comfortable with, so I think we need to move forward with that number. But I think people need to understand that this is, this is a very, very difficult time for all of us. Um, and as I said, nobody here wants to raise taxes. It's something that none of us would want to do, uh, but we've got a lot of people who stood up and said, this is what we need to do um, in order to keep the city what it is. Uh, the most important investment that most of us have in our, in our lives is our homes, uh, and this directly impacts it. The services that are provided here, 
uh, that the city provides directly impacts uh, the values of our homes, whether we think it does or not. It does have that <coughs> impact. Um, <coughs> we're going to continue to scrutinize how the money is spent. We're going to continue to try to find other ways to raise revenue. Uh, but as it's been said a number of times, it has been the perfect storm this time. Uh, I just want to make sure that everybody understands that I think the number should have been higher than it is. Um, I think that we're going to be in a lot more trouble. I think that the $600,000 difference that we were looking at as far as the number that I had versus the number that was on the, that was actually proposed, um, I think we're going to see that to be a, a small chunk of change compared to what we're going to be up against. We know from just looking at last month's sales tax numbers, last month's sales tax numbers were down $330,000. Now when you put those two numbers together, you're at a million dollars already that we're out of sync. Um, and believe me, I, I, know, I know it's hard for people to, to understand this. We have looked, the budget is very tight. We are cutting as we go through the budget. We're gonna try to do more of that. Um, and, and we will control it. We have continued to control it and we've done it over the years. Um, but I will support this, but I don't believe it's as high as it should be. Thank you, Alderman Mullen. Point of order. Yes. If, if I may, um, this ordinance, if for some reason it, it did not move forward this evening, we do still have the opportunity to vote on a tax levy. A couple years ago, I believe it was, there was some confusion of if the ordinance was not passed, would there be a tax levy in place? I just, before we place a vote, I wanna make sure that there would be the opportunity because at least from my standpoint, I believe there does need to be a tax rate increase. So I wanna make sure that our duck's in the row before moving forward. Uh, Alderman Mulliner. City. And actually, uh, I re defer to city manager Borchard on this. I believe this is the day we have to get this passed. Now, is there a last resort? Uh, I'll let the city manager defer to that, but. Uh, yeah, the, the city councils, every city council in the state, or, and maybe more significantly in DuPage County, we know that the DuPage County offices require the ordinances approved by the cities and villages and the other taxing jurisdictions. Those ordinances need to be filed at the county before the end of December. So there is a December 21st regular council meeting and there are opportunities for special meetings, but any tax levy needs to be filed at the county before the beginning of the next calendar year. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman uh, Brown. I think given the fact that we've got holidays upon us too and people are gonna be out of town and you know, it's important that we stay on schedule. The schedule is given to us by our city manager back in the summer. So I thank uh, city manager Borcher for keeping us on task. Alderman Nibel. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, a quick observation I just wanted to make um, because there is a lot of keen interest in this issue and I've got a lot of people calling me about it. Uh, and, and people actually aren't even sure sometimes, you know, what our positions are on this issue. Um, so I just want to make sure you know, that people understand that what we're voting on tonight is an ordinance that uh, encapsulates the policy recommendation that we voted on uh, back on November 16th, I believe it was. Uh, and some members really haven't spoken tonight uh, because they spoke extensively three weeks ago on this issue. My, my philosophy is to have the policy discussion, have it be as thorough, as intense as it needs to be, uh, but then leave the policy discussion at that point and then move on procedurally to what needs to be done. So, you know, I haven't stated my position on this issue, but for someone who's watching um, the meeting tonight, they might wonder, well, hey, you know, Alderman Nibel, why didn't you say anything? Well, the reason is because you can go back and look at the November 16th meeting where we discussed the same subject and we all uh, discussed our various reasons for doing whatever we thought was best. Um, and that's why a lot of us aren't really talking too much on the issue tonight because we have discussed it already. And I just don't want anybody to think that this is the only time that we're considering this issue. This has been part of a process. And I think all of us have spoken up at various meetings or at various times to explain why we're doing, or what we're doing and why. Thanks, Alderman Naibo. Anybody else for discussion? Alderman Rose. Thank you. Um, I do have a few <coughs> things I wanna say about this. Um, uh, over two months ago, I brought up the notion of property tax relief um, and I want to be very clear that I am supporting this primarily based um, on several things. Chairman Hips, uh, the minutes section from Finance Council Affairs, Chairman Hipskin stated he was confident the committee would recommend an appropriate rebate for the times we're in. My 
uh, vote is really contingent on the trust um, that we will work this out. Um, some have said this is going to be a bureaucratic nightmare. It is not. Property tax relief is possible. We already provide in a very simplified form tax relief for the municipal utility fund. People can already get that kind of relief. Um, it's very simple. Um, I made a referral uh, for property tax relief. I attended Finance Council Affairs Committee. I advocated for this position. I continue to advocate for this. I think this is reasonable uh, to do. I have researched various methods by which it can be done. I want to thank, uh, uh, I received some information uh, that the city of Chicago is actually uh, looking at the same thing. I want to be very clear what I'm proposing. What I'm proposing is the increment. I, I've heard what a lot of people have said here. Uh, I understand that people are in hard times, um, but I actually I do want to say that some people in my ward have actually called me and said, I want you to raise it. So it's not like I don't hear from anyone who doesn't say that. I'm talking about property tax relief for the increment, not for full property tax relief, but for this increment that we are putting into place. Based on household income, I agree, as some people say, there's a number of people who are out of work. Uh, I will tell you, I know uh, three people in, uh, there's many more, but I know a number of people in my ward who are losing their homes. Uh, so it's based on their income. Some are just holding on to do that. And that this would be renewable uh, every year. This is a sunset legislation. I, I propose that it have sunset legislation in it so that we look at it again a year from now, if we still need to do it then, we do it then. If we, in two years from now, if we don't need to do it, we don't do it at that point. Um, we have, uh, I base this on, we've, uh, I understand that the, it appears small to some folks. To some folks it appears large. The $5 a week is large to some people, that increase. And uh, reasonably it can be done can be done quite easily like we do with municipal utility fund, which is someone brings in their tax statement from last year. We look at household income. I, I, would, I don't recommend we make it onerous and nail people to the wall and tell us every single thing. I think that a tax statement is a reasonable way to do it. Um, I think that people uh, need short-term relief, so I am going to support this, but I'm supporting it. I just want to be very clear based on uh, what I've heard from the committee, uh, what I've had informal discussions from other folks on the council that this notion of property tax relief has got to be built into this um, at this point. And that, that is why I will support it because I support this notion of property tax relief. Thank you. Thanks, Alderman Rose. Uh, and before I go to Alderman Leader, um, uh, this was a great idea that she came up with to help people that are in a tough position. Uh, she is a social worker by trade, so I think that's probably uh, definitely one of those th things that the, those people that care. bleeding that's as you right, talk. That's right. That's <laughs> right. We, we do care about those that are, we care about everybody, but we, we I mean, there are people that are in, in tough positions, yep, and, and we're going to make sure that we have a, an avenue for them. Alderman Leader, thank you. Uh, you stole my, my thunder, <laughs> but I was also going to say that no one is better positioned on this city council, or even one could say almost in the city, is Dr. Rose. And she is a PhD and a professor at the University of uh, Wisconsin in Milwaukee and a very distinguished scholar in her own right. And this is somebody who, who is an expert on the field of what we are talking about, helping people in need. And, and I'm sure all of us support her and I want to say that I totally support older Dr. Rose. Pardon. I mean that sincerely. I totally support you in what you're trying to do. Thank you. Thanks, Alderman Leader. Anybody else? Alderman uh, Kennedy? Yeah, I just wanted to highlight for everyone that I don't think there's any one of the 14 or 15 there are people that are up here that really want to raise taxes. The fact of the matter is we are elected to do a job and to do what is necessary for the citizens of Elmhurst. As we look at this budget, I'm unsure if we're actually going to be able to do anything for the Working Capital Fund because of the tax rates being uh, in terms of the sales tax coming in. Really what we're doing here is chalking the wheels and hopefully to be able to stave off some of the problems that have come at us for many years. As we go th forth into the budget process, we need to take a zero-based approach. We need to look at things and make sure first we spend on what's necessary long before we talk about what we're going to spe spend on the niceties of life. So as we go forward, 
I know there's been a lot of people that have come and have questioned our abilities, but I think as, as a group here, we understand completely what everybody's going for. For the vast majority of us, we're living in the $400,000 average house or less. We are all working for companies that are struggling, that have had to take either no increases or had to take reduced uh, pay in, uh, in our situation. So we live in the same world as all of our, our uh, people in our wards. We have the responsibility, being elected officials, officials, that we do the right thing. So we have to do, we have to do this job. We get this job done now. We spend wisely, and we do, as Mr. Mayor has said, to rebuild the tax base and really work to get more business in Elmhurst and ultimately reduce that burden going forward. Thank you. Thanks, Alderman Kennedy. Well said. Anybody else for discussion on this item? Alderman Hipskin. Yes. Um, so uh, to address a few of the points that have been brought up, number one, uh, to the citizens of Elmhurst, in addition to Alderman Rose. I will not let you down. I will not let the citizens down. You will get that. I don't have the ability to truly pass it, but I think we have the will here. Um, I hope we have the will to pass it, and you've been very helpful in the guts of what we want to accomplish, and uh, it's moving along. And so uh, we will not let the citizens down, and we will not let you down. So just I, I, I appreciate your trust, and uh, it, I, I promise you it will be, uh, you know, paid back. Alderman Leader, uh, I think uh, some of your math was right on. We were talking about $1 um, a month. Uh, I, I, I've heard uh, another alderman mention that uh, we don't want to raise taxes, and nobody up here wants to raise taxes. I mean, we're raising taxes on ourselves. We're raising taxes, but we also have to look at the historical, um, what, what this is all about. I mean, are we just raising, do we raise taxes every year? Do we look, are we spending more money than we're taking in? Uh, is our revenue streams changing? I've heard uh, uh, the mayor talk about the perfect storm. Well, before the perfect storm, we lived for years and years and years in sunshine in great sunshine. I mean, fantastic sunshine. If we look at the statistics, we had, I, I mean, the, uh, for the last 12 years, the tax rate per $100 of EAV for the city has gone down. So therefore, we've gone down the amount of money that we've collected from the people. Where did that money come from? Well, it was made up from, uh, it was made up actually from sales tax in the late 90s. And then sales tax started decreasing. 9-11 was a big hit on the sales tax. So we could watch sales tax go down. And in retrospect, uh, we were told many times of that going down. What brought us up? What brought us to the point where we didn't have this perfect storm back then? Well, if we look at the revitalization of this town, um, due to the TIF and due to the, the uh, the obsolete housing uh, segment being replaced with new, new housing, that completely kept us going for another 10 years. We had years and years and years of, ten, of 200 new permits on houses. That's $2 million a year. We had, we had 10 years of that. So, I mean, things are going great. What happens, when that t what happens after that $10,000 gets in? Well, a builder comes in takes a home worth $250,000, puts a home that's paying around $3,500 a year in taxes, takes that down, and we'll just call it near 2000 He takes that house down, he puts a $750,000 home. That home that was paid, that $250,000 home was paying approximately, and I'm just guessing at my rates, but they're not gonna be far off. That home's paying $3,000 a year in taxes. Well, in, $2, in 2001, when the home is complete, a new family comes into town. A new family comes into town. Wow, that's significant for us. That's what, that's what we're, we're all about. They put people in the schools. Uh, you have new families. They shop downtown. They just bought a $750,000 home. They're now paying 
uh, approximately, you know, if there was $3,000 before, now they're paying $12,000 a year in taxes. So we just increased our taxes by 4x in the exact same household. We actually had a new family move in or a growing family move into a bigger house. Wow, that is great. And that happened for 10 plus years. That, that's fantastic. So if we look at that, we didn't have to raise your taxes for the last 10 years. Now we take a look at um, other factors that come into play. And I was hearing tonight that it's not relevant how we look at ourselves in comparison to other people. Well, what is relevant about comparing our municipality, our village, or our town to other towns? Well, state statutes, our fire and our police um, and our retirement, those are dictated by state statutes. We don't have anything to do with that. They throw increases at us and we have to pay that. Well, actually, our neighbors are in that same situation. And all of our neighbors, our neighbors, and what's cool about that is our, not only our neighbors in DuPage County, but in Cook County, in Will County, in Lake County, uh, in Kane County, have the same thing. So why would it be relevant that we want to compare ourselves to that? And if we look at the Collar counties around Chicago, and there was actually 249 of them, uh, I'll, I'll ask you a couple of, uh, uh, I'll ask the public a, a couple of questions. Braceville, Compton Hills, Simmerton, Godley, Diamond, and Midlothian. What do those towns have in common? Well, I, I don't know. What do they have in common with Elmhurst? Really not a whole lot. These are, these are towns that are very small, but actually they have a lower tax rate than Elmhurst, but very small towns. Actually, some of them are so new that they haven't had the ability to levy a tax yet. But they have a lower tax rate than Elmhurst. Now, there's other towns with lower tax rates. Oak Brook, North Riverside, Schomburg, Gurney. Hmm, what do those towns have in common with them? Multi-billion dollar malls that, wait, that's not in common with Elmhurst. We don't have a multi-billion dollar mall. But they have a lower tax rate than us. Some of them have a zero tax rate. So those towns that we've never heard of in those big towns with the malls are the only out of 249 municipalities, townships, and villages in the greater Chicago area that have a lower tax rate than Elmhurst. Okay, but all 249 do are subject to the same state statutes, are subject to the same types of problems that we are facing here in Elmhurst. Therefore, we're number 11. You know, we have, we have some that have a zero levy because they have m big, large malls that are subsidizing. We have very small towns that have never actually had a levy. levy. And then there's Elmhurst. So I have to ask, I think that is relevant. And if we look at the 249 municipalities around the Chicagoland area and just take the mean or the medium of where these uh, where these different municipalities fall in into place the medium is about 9.1 percent if we were to go to 9.1 we're talking about a 255 dollar increase in our taxes if we were to go to if we were to go to the medium of all of our all of our fellow counties around our tax increase, and this tax increase is medium, so this would be something that, you know, was, was done many, many years ago. We're going up $255. If we just go to the median on this, we're at, we'd be going up another $1,157. I'm sorry, we're going up $255. We're proposing to go up $255. If we go to the median of all of our neighbors, we'd be going up $1,100. So, you know, we talk about the perfect storm. Yes, it is a perfect storm, but we have to acknowledge that we've been efficient. I mean, we're more efficient than 238 other municipalities within our, of all of our neighbors. So are we doing a good job? Are we spending money wisely? Um, the numbers speak from the, for themselves. 
So it is relevant because those other communities are faced with the exact same expenses, exact same revenue streams that we have, and, you know, so the reality is the numbers speak for themselves. I think so. I, should I call the question? Um, any more discussion? Alderman Pezza? Um, well, I'm calling the question. Got to call, we got to question, call the question on the floor, um, I think which ends discussion, second. and we would go to a roll call vote unless there's a challenge on, on the, uh, on the call the question. I you challenge. Want, want to challenge it? Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, on a challenge, we have to vote, or do we do we? You can, by acclamation, you mean you can by acclamation you recognize that. Okay. Okay. I recognize the I recognize that there is a challenge, and I'll go ahead and, and keep the conversation going. Alderman Pezza? Thanks. I, I sure. Thank you, Alderman Naibo. I could have added this later. I just, um, you know, once again, this is the beauty of discussion and debate because it gets us all thinking and hopefully we can think of some great ideas toward the future also because no matter what the outcome here tonight, you know, you talked about the sunshine days and I think it's unfortunate that here we have the rainy days. So no matter what the outcome, and this isn't an easy decision for any of us, that let this be a lesson at the very least for our future so that the next time that sun starts shining instead of standing here during the storm putting on rain boots and treading through the water we will actually have an umbrella to hold over the taxpayers heads and protect them with and that would be my hopes that this council no matter what the vote tonight will keep that in mind and for future and future councils we don't hand down what we've been handed so Thanks. Thanks for the insight. Thank you, Alderman. And as uh, Alderman Kennedy was speaking, we heard about four or five squads and ambulances go by, uh, which I think kind of is, is kind of the reason why we're up here, and that's to serve and protect. And it costs money to do that. Uh, we have to pay those wages. We need to make sure we have manpower, and uh, we need to make sure that you know when the chips are down, we are there. And uh, the only way we can do that is to is is to keep our revenue streams in a position where we can do that. And, and we're watching the dollars. We've got great staff uh, that is doing doing their best. We got department heads that are watching our departments. And we're down to two counters at City Hall. We used to have four. We're down to two. We're working with Clear Story uh, to do that to make be, make ourselves more efficient. Um, so we're 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 feeling it. Uh, people are as they retire. They're not. We're not rehiring. Uh, union guys are out there taking instead of four percent increases. Voluntarily, voluntarily, they're taking furlough days and, and they're going down to one, one and a half percent. Management, same thing. So, so we're really, we're, you know, we're, we're tightening the belt. Oak Brook just closed their library. Talk about a lower taxing town. Picture if we closed the library in this town that we just passed a referendum on it for passed by 70 some percent. You know, you picture if I was at the turkey trot and told the 6,500 people that were there that we're not going to do the trot this year because the city can't fund our community events anymore. You want to see a packed house? 6,500 people showed up for that event. So the 400 people that came to the museum event, if we told them we're closing the museum down, you want to see a packed house? So, so uh, you know, I think it's important. I know I got a few phone calls, too. I got about five. And after I spoke to all five of them, three out of the five said, you know what, we're glad we got a businessman in there that cares about this town and is not going to let this town go down. And I, I won't. So anybody else for discussion? Hearing none, I ask Kirk Spencer to call the roll, please. Hipskin. Aye. York. Aye. Gutenkopf. No. Peza. No. Shea. No. Leader. Aye. Rose. Aye. Bram. No. Nibo. No. Healy. Aye. Morley. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Wagner. Aye. Nine ayes, five nays. Nine ayes, five nays. The ordinance passes uh, until item number 11, other business. Anybody have anything for other business at this point? Alderman Mulliner? Not sure if it fits under other business or where, but I just wanted, I wanted to make sure that everybody <laughs> understood. Um, Alderman Shea and Alderman Pezza had a series of questions and suggestions that were made, 
and we put together, there was a report in the consent agenda, and I want to make sure that the public knows um, there were some very good questions in that, and I think that they needed to be addressed, and I think that uh, there's some great information available uh, to, if somebody wants to dig into it and get the answers, uh, but th those questions were, are, have been addressed, and if there's more questions, I think they should continue to come forward, but um, I think it was very, it's very appropriate that the public also knows that the questions have also been addressed, um, so they are they are out there and available if anybody has questions. To, but uh, those were good questions to be asked. Thank you, Alderman Mulliner. Yeah, in the future too, uh, when we've got task force meeting and everything, we're very quick at response with questions. So I encourage our aldermen to uh, put these questions in advance to us. We'll have the task force review them in public disclosure with the press and all that kind of good stuff. But uh, uh, basically, uh, a couple week response time. Uh, I thought was excellent by staff. The answers were all very much uh, credible. Uh, it looks like, you know, we're definitely doing our job and, and, uh, and it's a good thing. So, Alderman Shea. Alderman Shea. Uh, yeah, I want to just add on to uh, what Alderman Mulliner said. Uh, a lot of those qu uh, questions, suggestions, and ideas, they came from the residents. Uh, they were emailing, calling them, and I want to thank them for them, and they were very good, and, and they're going to be looked at. And, um, really thought hard on. So thank you again. Thank you, Alderman Shea. Anybody else? Any announcements that anybody would like to make? Alderman Mulliner and Alderman Guttenkopf, if they're all Alderman Mulliner. I guess I'm out of role. But <laughs> I, um, I just want to congratulate uh, Dr. Rose on her appointment uh, to, uh, I'm not even sure what the title of the, of the organization is. Metropolitan Family Service. Yes, congratulations oh, on your appointment. Thank you. Yeah. It's a, it's a fitting uh, board for Susan. It's the largest social service agency in DuPage County and actually the largest social survey, service agency in Chicagoland. Um, actually, one of the founding board members was Jane Adams, who actually founded Hull House. And when we Where talk I about... I went to school. Yeah. When we talk about uh, people helping people, uh, I have a picture uh, that has, of, of Hull House that has my grandfather uh, on the front cover of the Hull House book. So I came from a very poor family. You know, Susan's very sympathetic toward people with social service issues, uh, mental illness, et cetera. And, um, but Susan and I are on that board. I haven't been to many of those meetings lately because I've been putting a lot of fires out here, but I appreci appreciate Susan jumping on there because it's a, it's a very, very important uh, group. We have actually offices here for them. Uh, they treat seniors. They have in-home respite programs. They have uh, caregiver services because a lot of our spouses are taking care of their spouses. And uh, that's something the city funds. People don't know that. Uh, people don't know that if a teen has a pregnancy, they've got a place to go that's free, and it's right here at City Hall. Um, so Susan Rose is on that board. I thank her for, for jumping on. Thank you for thank acknowledging you. it, Mark. And uh, that's, that's what we're all about here. So anybody else for announcements? Alderman uh, Gutenkoff? Thank uh, you. Um, on Monday after Thanksgiving, uh, I did something I do every year. I volunteer for a local organization called United Community Concerns Association. This year, United Community Concerns, which is a food providing program, um, not a food bank exactly, but an organization that works with local food banks and with um, people from the community to collect food and then redistribute it to the needy in our community. Last week, uh, we packed food boxes for 272 needy families in our community. Uh, we do this at the Public Works Garage, so I wanted to thank Public Works Department for giving up some of their space uh, for uh, several weeks where food collection happens and then the redistribution. And then on Saturday, the 12th of December, many volunteers from Elmhurst will come to the Public Works Garage, pick up boxes, and deliver them to needy families in our community. So this is partially a plug for United Community Concerns because this is people in our town collecting and redistributing food to needy people in our town. So, um, and a thank you to Public Works and to all of the volunteers who come out and help pack food and distribute this food. So, um, Saturday's the distribution day. Thank you, everybody. Kudos, Alderman Gutenkoff. And uh, if there are folks out there in need, whether it's food, whether it's counseling, uh, we have a clerk's office. Clerk Spencer is, is the best. She understands where a lot of these programs are. We've got our food pantry here at IC. It's affiliated with St. Peter's. So, you know, uh, 
uh, we know that there are some folks out there that are that are struggling, and uh, some of them might even live here, and, and we understand that, and we, I think, are probably the best of taking care of our own. Uh, we've got ECAF that helps kids with disabilities and sickness, uh, gave out over $100,000 last year, and gave out every one of those 500 kids got a Christmas present because of ECAF. Um, so, so we're here, we step up, we help our own, and uh, anybody in need, you call the clerk's office, and Clerk Spencer will, will divert you to Met Services, uh, to the various uh, organizations that we work with, and we actually fund because that's what we do as a city. We, we, help, we help fund these organizations to keep them here in our town. So, anybody else? I'm in, uh, uh, city Manager Borchard. Just uh, thank you, Your Honor. Three, three quick uh, announcements. Uh, the, uh, the Finance Committee report did deal with the 30 questions, and in that regard, there was a short report on the consent agenda. The answers to that are, are part of that committee report. It's an attachment that is on the city website as it's part of the city council's agenda. City council agenda is on the city website along with the attachments uh, that are appropriate. So that, that information is all available on the city website for review if there is interest in that regard. Secondly, appreciate the council's um, uh, patience understanding that the five-year capital improvement budget will be slightly delayed it was a memo uh, to you, but it, there is a need to more significantly review that budget because the sales tax to the F capital improvement fund and income tax, which finances the capital improvement fund, is down. And we understand certainly the impact to the general fund. Now that the staff understands what the general fund will get from the property tax, we will revise that five-year capital budget as appropriately as the staff can identify. It will be constrained, but it will be directed towards maintaining core and critical services and potentially doing as much help as possible to core critical operations if it can all be identified as, as and supported by capital. So you'll get that revised five-year capital budget uh, before the end of the calendar year. Typically, your review of that doesn't begin until the uh, first meeting in January, so we'll be prepared to review that at that point. And lastly, uh, there is an announcement, if there is interest, actually from the, the broader community as well, but certainly the Elmer City Council is invited to a DuPage County citizens coordinated, controlled, and sponsored event for local governmental officials that serve DuPage County. That per breakfast is December 17th. Those that go pay their own way, and uh, it's quite a nice activity to begin the holiday season, um, to breakfast, per breakfast. If there's interest from the elected officials, please let me know. The city has been represented, the city of Elmers has been represented at this for uh, as long as that per breakfast has been ongoing for some 35 years. Uh, Elmhurst staff and elected officials have attended, and if there's interest, let me know. We'll make arrangements for folks to be there again and we go at our own expense that's all I have Alderman Pezzo just quick question for city manager Borchert I got a couple of calls I guess there was an article in the paper regarding and we may not have the answer but if we could find out the DuPage County Water Commission some type of a shortage and an increase in water bill do we know the impact or when will we know how can we find out more information Elmhurst is a member of the DuPage Water Commission. Elmhurst receives its water through the DuPage Water Commission. So we will be, as a community, uh, responding and reacting to that issue at the DuPage Water Commission. Our understanding is that their, their intended desire to spend down some fund balances use their, their reserves that plan, which was a solid plan and supported by, by the Water Commission Board, got started, but because of their revenues being so reduced, they spent those reserves much faster than they anticipated, and now they've got to respond more quickly to a turn the boat around type of a situation. So we would anticipate as a customer of the DuPage Water Commission that we'll probably be seeing a rate increase a little sooner than what the Water Commission had earlier identified. Thanks. Very good. Anybody else? Uh, uh, just to add on to that, we've actually 
uh, knew that these rate increases were coming, so we've looked at them in the budget for a period of time. Um, we've, we've watched this commission. We have no control over it. Um, so we, we're, we're aware of this. We're cognizant. We've done the analysis, you know, moving out, you know, on, on year by year and also by five-year basis. So it, it, it's, uh, it'll come a little quicker than we expect, but um, it is not anything that's really surprising the Finance Committee, um, and we will deal with it when there's concrete information to deal with. Very good. Thanks, Alderman. Um, anybody else for announcements? Uh, one, uh, two quick last, thing, last things. Um, the, um, one of the points that was uh, brought out on the 30 questions was a uh, uh, District 205 debt owed to the city of a little over a million dollars. I did get a lot of phone calls on that. Um, you know, that is something that we are not necessarily looking to collect tomorrow. Uh, we understand that they are in their own situation as well. Um, some of the, all, several of the Alderman, Alderman Pez, Alderman Shea, we're asking about those dollars. Um, you know, when we have a capital project that needs to be addressed, we'll, we'll, we'll face that when, when that happens. Uh, but at this point, uh, we are not looking to ask the school district for a little over a million dollars to, uh, which is, an, is a debt that is confirmed, it's verified. Uh, Alderman Mulliner can, can probably go into that maybe at a later time. But, uh, and we are also uh, putting, we all already have a Park City Committee, and we are inviting the school district uh, to, to work intergovernmentally uh, so that we could all work together. Um, you know, we're, we're going to be a progressive city. We need to be. We need to grow. We need to build that tax base. Uh, we'll need tools to do that because other towns have those tools in place. We've got our three tools that have been model tools for us. And, again, we've been asked by IMLs, Miller Municipal League, which is the, the, the best of the best of all the cities to come out and actually talk about how we've been successful, how we work with our schools, how we've built the tax base, how we've released millions of dollars and built that base for them. And uh, I think it's important, more, more so than ever, uh, in these tough times that we look for the future, not only for the city, but for those school kids. Because that's, again, that's, that's the right, this mayor ran was to build that base for those guys. So, uh, but we're not asking for that million dollars back until we have a project, you know, and we've got a lot of other things that, uh, a lot of other fish to fry. So I don't want people in the school community getting, uh, getting concerned about it this at this point. So some other may be, may be asking for that, but, but I think this council overall is, is in a pretty good position to, to, that we, we are not looking for those dollars immediately. Um, and lastly, I was, at, I was at a fundraiser, actually I went to the fundraiser Saturday night at the uh, Wilder Mansion, and uh, after there was a fundraiser for a, a gentleman by the name of Kit Harley. Kit Harley was a York grad, 1994. Uh, he is uh, dying of cancer. Um, there was a fund set up at Community Bank of Elmhurst for Kit. He has uh, got one child, uh, he's about 33 years old, and he has a, uh, his wife is pregnant with number two. Uh, he was diagnosed as another gentleman's wife was with uh, actually stage five. Uh, he's got a brain tumor, and uh, they're giving him literally weeks. So uh, the, the, it was at Fitz's Bowl. It was packed. Uh, they, raised the, they, they did very well. Um, but, but when you see, and Kit was there, and, you know, he's blind. Uh, it's a very, very tough situation. So I ask uh, that everybody keep him in our prayers. He's an Elmer's guy. He's an Elmer's kid. He's an adult now and uh, father and uh, tough situation. So. Keep keep him keep, keep Kit Harley in their, in their prayers and and if you do consider giving, there is a fund at Community Bank of Elmhurst, Friends for Kit Harley. So uh, with that, I'd ask for a motion to adjourn. Alderman Hipskin, Alderman Morley, all in favor? Say aye. 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 aye.